Welcome to Tangents of Creation. I am your host, Jamie Chaos. And with me tonight, I've got some special guests outside of the always awesome Annie Lace. We have two community members, uh, which is Lord and Nuclear Tango. Lord is currently having um, a bit of an issue. A little bit he's, of microphone issues. <laughs> yeah, he's having a bit of a microphone issue. So I'm, I'm hoping he's going to be able to join us. Um, and then Nuke, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Well, hey guys, I'm Nuclear Tango. Um, I'm an avid Ashes of Creation fan, and I'm probably an addict addict at this point. But do you want to talk are. about your cosmetic collection? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, we took that in the closet, under the bed, anywhere we can hide. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you have fund helped to ha fund half of Ashes of Creation at this point. Um, oh, 100. <laughs> so tonight we're doing something a little bit different. Uh, hopefully you guys can hear everybody and hope it's, the audio is all coming through well. Um, so we're doing, this is new for our podcast. We're going to be doing something a little bit different. Uh, instead of just Annie and I, we're going to be doing kind of a, not debate, but a friendly, possibly a heated. round table. Yeah. Right. A round table. I'm possibly um, heated. Oh my God. Possibly to heated. Um, talking about some of the changes that came to freeholds um, as well as uh, the resource bag and how people kind of feel about that and then depending on if we have time we'll get into the node system um lord is also a community member he's not here but he's been with us since the beginning um i think he is was one of the one of the first subscribers uh to our channel when we started the podcast i think he's almost a year old because i'm pretty sure the show is almost <laughs> a year old that's kind of how we gauge how old our podcast yeah. is, is by his subscription yeah, like, yeah. How, how long how has long lord been lord subscribed been I was because yep. <laughs> I was when he hit we hit um nine months. It was like, oh, we had a baby. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's All crazy right, to so, think it's been a year almost. I know I I'm not sure when the anniversary was because I I waited three I know weeks. we didn't keep track of the first yeah, we didn't keep track of the first episode, so it's just kind of and Twitch deletes to VODs. So <laughs> Yeah, because I, I had I one of the things they recommend for podcasts is you wait three weeks before you upload the video, so you have three videos or three, three ones to give out to everybody. Um, so I know it's like three weeks back from when I uploaded, but I have no idea when I uploaded. Uh, <laughs> all right. It was sometime this month. So here we go. One year yeah, anniversary. Um, we're just going to say, yeah. <laughs> so I think of any other housekeeping things. Uh, if you guys want, there's links dropping in chat. Uh, we have a link to our, I'll go ahead and do this <laughs> command. Our Discord, if Nuke's you guys want to come, cult of chaos shirt. <laughs> yeah, if you guys want to come and hang out, uh, Nuke's got some of our merch on. I should have my own shirt on, but I don't know where I put it. <laughs> but if you guys head over to the chaos and lace dot store, we've got some cool merch up there. I'm um, just trying to pad time until I can, I can get Lord on the show, uh, no, but I no. don't. I think we you might have to jump in mid conversation. But I feel like a lot of, um, I know Lord was had some things he wanted to express about. Uh, the changes to the bags and things like that. Oh, wait. Uh, yes. oh there he is. <laughs> oh, there is the voice of an Hello. angel. We have <laughs> oh, my God. Houston? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's working. Yes. We can hear you. It's working. All right. It's, oh, sweet. All right. Lord, did you want to introduce yourself or did you hear my, my introduction of you? <laughs> I did not hear the introduction. I only introduced um, you as a community uh, member and then... That's about it. Our oldest, our oldest. Our oldest. Fan. Yep. You're almost a year old. Yeah. And you mentioned you had a baby. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> turned nine months. He's gonna be our baby when we have a family. Oh Actually, God. <laughs> Eleven months. Eleven months. Is it eleven months? Yeah. Oh yeah, hell yeah! There we go. Eleven oh, there months. It is. Yeah. Oh. Look at that. <laughs> Thank Sweet. you. All right. So I guess we can kind of dive into. Um, the freeholds and this discussion is kind of around the exclusivity and accessibility of the freeholds. I know a lot of people kind of feel split on certain parts of this. Um, it seems like some people really like it. Some people really don't. And some people are a mix of depending on different things. Uh, so let me, let me find one of these first questions. So I'm going to, I'm going to give this one to Annie because I know this is something that, um, <laughs> she kind of feels some things about is reaching max level, a reasonable requirement to access freeholds. I don't like it. 
for starters. Um, <laughs> oh gosh, you put the like super loaded question on my shoulders. Oh, super um, loaded. Okay, so I think it's problematic, and the reason, which we talked about a bit in our Discord, um, it's not all my idea, but it's going to cause like a race to level scenario where because there's such a limited number of freeholds. There's going to be a bunch of people that instead of enjoying the leveling experience, which I think is what we were all were kind of expecting and hoping for, there's going to be a bunch of people who want to race to get to level 50 and, you know, get in a node up, which that I expected was to try and race to level the node. But I think it's just going to make it so now that enjoyment of leveling is now being usurped by people trying to hit max level so they can grab up all the freeholds. Even if they don't necessarily need one, they're just going to want it because it's like a hot commodity. Nuke, you can jump in if you want. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, I was just going to say, so, I mean, I think that's a big part of it, but I, I actually had this discussion with Jamie and I was like, okay, look at the math here. And we're talking that if if they do hit the target number of 50,000 per server, right? And you only have a low thousand, so we can assume maybe 2,000, maybe 3,000. We're talking like such a small percentage of the player base at the beginning is going to be able to have access to freeholds because not only do nodes have to level up and you have to work through that process and get the expansion of the actual parcels of land that we're going to get. I don't think, I think the casual player, I think they're not even going to think about it. So that's, that's kind of where I kind of support the level of 50, but I also have my like, okay, well me as a hardcore player, I, I want that, you know, so I'm going to be, I'm going to log in every day. I'm going to try to grind for 50 and I'm like, okay, I'm going to be the first one to be able to bid because I need this. <laughs> See, I was, I was thinking about this as well. And, um, I don't, I don't like the idea of being rushed, but also like, I'm going to degen the game anyway. So it's like, it's a hard, like, how much do I actually care about this? Because I'm going to try to push myself to level 50 as fast as possible to begin with. But I do, I don't like having that external factor of like, Hey, if I don't rush, I'm not getting this. And I just don't understand. Like, even though that this is for the, the end game processing and crafting, why does it, why can I only get this at 50? Like to me, it just seems like a, a weird thing where if you, if you can grind out as like a level 15, you somehow you know, end up in this, you know, level three node, you have enough money, you've got enough backing. You just have to do it because you hit level 50. Like you just see it for me, it feels really arbitrary of like, if someone else is already putting a shit ton of work in to do it at such a low level, like what, why stop them from being able to achieve that? And then like, cause then you can yeah, right, start like exactly. all this, this competition, this fighting and stuff early too. <laughs> Exactly. I, yeah, I agree with that. I don't think it should be a le level requirement. Maybe like I was saying, like a crafting requirement, possibly where I did like that because idea. it's for utilizing crafting mainly. Like you should have your crafting level up to like I don't know. I don't know how they're gonna work, but like level two or three, depending how many levels there are. Lord, did you have any particular thoughts yeah. on the uh, level cap? I mean, like I've said, uh, I think that it's pretty straightforward. It should just be open to everyone once the node hits level three. Um, I think that the amount of effort that people are going to put into doing the quest is, it should dispel worries that people have about casuals having freeholds. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing too. Like, <laughs> like if you're, if you were a level 10, you get all the other requirements, right? You, you somehow were able to farm all the, um, get all the gold for it. You were able to get all the currency uh, for that freehold, like why, why don't you, you know, like just cause this person's at low, I just, I don't understand the whole point. Even I do understand that like, it's the, the whole purpose because, um, going back and looking at something that Steven said recently, it was that freeholds were always supposed to be part of the end game system because of the way that crafting works. It's for the end game top tier crafting materials which I didn't, I didn't realize this till recently. Cause I, there was a, I believe it was talked about during the fighter showcase. Um, he, he said like, these are going to be for max level. Like, I don't think he specifically said max level though. And I don't know if that was ever expressed. It's for some, that's like the one thing that's really got me on a lot of this. Right. And that's what I'm saying. If you're putting in all of this effort, I think that you should reap the benefits of the freehold without having that 
level cap placed on you. Now, we can move on to an another thing that kind of came up during that stream. Wait, I had a, I had another oh, comment. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I think what Lord said about having it be free to everybody, I definitely think that would be ideal just because it kind of changes what people's priorities would be then. So instead of the priority being get to level 50, their priority now would be get the node to level three. Right. So now we can See, that feels... do this. You know, like it puts that energy into like a group you know, something that's going to benefit a group instead of like people degening the game just to hit level 50, which like, I mean, sure, we can degen the game, but like, we're not going to be able to go as hard as somebody who doesn't have three kids. <laughs> yeah. But, okay. Let's be honest. So Annie said that when, um, when it does release, she's like, you're sending the kids to your mom for a month and we're, you're taking vacation <laughs> and we're going to degen the game. So like, Let's let everyone know, like, because I I consider us semi hardcore players, um, like when he's consider us hardcore mainly because of skill cap. I am not, I'm not, I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm the most skilled <laughs> player, but I do, I do all right, all right, um, but yeah, so like I do understand, but like, so that's why I'm kind of torn with it because I know I'm gonna DJ in the game, I know I'm gonna sit down, and every part of me is gonna be like, enjoy the journey, just do it, and I'm gonna be like, no, there's numbers, hit fifty. <laughs> Like, I just, I know so, I'm not going to be able to stop myself. That's definitely, like, that's always been your mindset in games, whereas I'm somebody who likes to play the game more leisurely. Like, I'll put a lot of hours into it, but I'm definitely, you know, like, when we're playing New World, I'm going off the beaten path crafting <laughs> and stuff. And <laughs> um, so, like, I kind of like that touch of leisure to my gameplay just to actually enjoy it. And, like, the devs put so much time into, you know, this project and everything. And, like, it's kind of a shame that that's going to be, what they're motivating is people to just blast through everything and not, you know, take the time to like enjoy the sites and read the quests and, you know, whatever else along the way and explore, um, which is what I really like enjoying. Like I love leveling. I love like exploring the world as I go. And if, if they keep it as it is, and that's the play style I stay with, then because I want to do animal husbandry and I'm hoping to get top tier at that, it's going to put me at a disadvantage if I can't get a freehold because then I am locked out of reaching like the max profession level for that, which feels real shitty. <laughs> this is where Annie gets really pissed because we were talking about that. She personally has like a vendetta right now because she is like, I, my whole gameplay that I want to do is animal husbandry. And this is going to fuck me out of getting my freehold and doing this whole thing. Like, like that's what exactly. she's been the whole fucking time. She's so <laughs> well, okay. No, I mean, not, not necessarily us because I think we have a bit more of like a privilege than other people because we are streamers. So they're like, I'm not going to assume, not that, but like, not that big of let's streamers. be honest. We're probably going to get help along the way. Like it happens. I will um, say, Lord help me. But the, I'm the thinking about someone <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So like, I'm going to think about people who have the same goals I do, but don't have that kind of platform or support when they're playing and well, it's locking them up. Like that was like the biggest reason I wanted to play this game was because of like the animal husbandry aspects with the mounts and everything. So, so hold up though. Um, so we're, we're talking about, you know, what it will bring up streamer flavor. It's we're not that big a streamer. So I don't know by the time if Ashes <laughs> comes out, if anyone's even going to give a fuck, but one of the things that we can do and something anybody can do um, with this because of the family system and because of guilds, you could get together and you could all pool that money and, and try to get this going. So like, even though you might be a disadvantage from someone who maybe just degen everything, but if they don't have the backing, but I would assume most of these guilds probably will have some backing. That's why we got to play on low pop servers with nobody on it. <laughs> but, um, but no, like, I I, under, I definitely get that concern. Um, I'm gonna. We have you guys are blowing up chat. Uh, I cannot read <laughs> it at the moment. Um, um, okay, I'll. If you're ready, I can read a couple things from chat. Yeah, if you want to, if yeah, we'll do. Um, as as long as it pertains to like this kind of topic, um, then we'll yeah, move on um, to yeah. So. Boshi asked, maybe Intrepid could add, well, they didn't ask, but they said, maybe Intrepid could add lots of smaller freeholds, just like big enough for a house, well, um, which they did release that article that did say that there's going to be like five different options for housing, right? Um, including so, like apartments in the city and like instanced housing, I think. And, yeah, so I do want to, um, a couple other things. I do want to clarify this because <laughs> Stephen had said this, um, that because I believe it's in that article. 
uh, you will be able to do like top tier housing stuff within an instance apartment and also um, the the static housing inside of a node. And then even there's there's options within an in. So if your whole thing is only player housing, right, you just want a house. This the freehold really doesn't unless you really want your own out in the world house. Did you mean to say really... top tier crafting? No, 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 no. Um, it's okay, yeah. because <laughs> yeah, uh, I believe in the article it talks about that there are certain benefits and things that you can only get from having apartments and also having the stack housing. So there's a yep. whole nother set, like talking about having buffs from different furniture um, and, and things like that. It's in that article. I wish I had a bit more time to drop it, but they, they dropped it uh, kind of right as I was getting things ready. Uh, but they did say that within those housing things, if your thing is only housing, you're going to be able to get a house because housing is directly connected to citizenship. You cannot be a citizen without a home. So every player will be able to get some type of house. Now, if your big thing is crafting and processing and want to drop those sweet ass cosmetics on shit, that's <laughs> that's where freeholds are. But yeah, instance right. apartments, um, was it instance, static, and inns. You you can rent a room in an inn. Uh, which so, honestly, my drunken uh, Yeah, I'm, I'm glad they're adding that in. <laughs> my, um it definitely is concerning for me though that there's just going to be people who want to buy a freehold just because and are gold grinders so they can support it. And then it locks other people out who actually want to utilize it. I mean, it that's, that's part of the... Well, he's mentioned it's gone beyond that, though. Because like, he said that like maybe if you're in a military, uh, you might have to grind like, on right. a certificate oh, or okay. something I, this along is those actually, lines in order to purchase it. This is part so, of the... The next, hold on, wait, wait, I'll let you, I'll let you go on that. This is part of, the, I have this question and this is, um, what do you think about that three layer bidding system? Um, do you think that it, it's a fair thing, uh, or do you think it's, uh, favor certain players or overall, just how do you feel about having to have, um, that potential extra currency for that type of node? And then the other thing they have that they talked about for that third layer is player certificates which we don't know dick about <laughs> true are, are you asking me or no i'm asking new because he was already going down that okay. road <laughs> i mean so i think overall it's a good system um obviously you're going to alienate some players because like you know maybe they don't want to grind pvp for those honor merits but i think that's kind of also the beauty in the system because there's multiple node types and i assume that per node type you're going to have different types of certificates that you can earn and so if questing is really your thing maybe you want to go divine. to node because i yeah divine <laughs> this is one. where i'll be at it and so i think it's a great i think it's a great option um and it, it probably is going to open up more options for players than restrict them in my opinion and I think that's a good thing. And among freeholds, like I said, I think it's already going to be very limited and it's going to be very niche. And you're going to have those people that, yeah, you're going to have guilds that grind out those spots. Maybe it's a PVP guild and they, they just own the military node and they own all 20 plots on the military node. But <laughs> you can pick up, you can move, you can be like, hey, I want to go check out this place in the mountains and it's an economic node and I'm just going to grind money and grind crafting and I'm going to get my node. And, and my freehold. And so I think it's overall a good system. Um, Lord, do you have any, any thoughts or opinions on that three layer bidding system? Yeah. I mean, I, I mostly agree with Nuke there on what he said. Um, I think it's a good system. I also want to highlight how it, the pitfalls of it um, might come into play. I wonder if maybe the guilds will be able to monopolize entire uh, nodes and their zones of influence. And then, uh, use this three layer bidding system to help the other to help their guild mates to acquire freeholds in that guild to make it faster and easier. I don't know if it'll be faster than if they just grinded the gold for it, but I believe that if there's a if you need certificates for materials and stuff to get a freehold, um, then your guild mates could help you out with that. And I think that that could be kind of not good. <laughs> I could, uh, <laughs> I could, I could, throughout the word. <laughs> yeah, I, I got to say, hopefully they make soul no. bound. <laughs> yeah, yeah, soul bounding the uh, certificates because I know there's yeah. player certificates. And I believe they are like an account bound thing, but just don't know what they are yet. Um, I would see that that argument gets brought up a lot about like people kind of getting um, 
anxious about like what happens with like a mega guild, right? I think one of the nice things about the system, because a lot of people compare it to Eve online and corporations on Eve online can be fucking massive. Like you're talking about thousands of players. The, the max cap for a guild, depending on what you put into your guild, because the, the way that the guild system's working, you can either level your guild by adding more slots or you can get benefits. So that was one of the things that Steven's talked about that potentially if you don't have the numbers, you might have the benefits that they don't have that's going to make you on par with them. I don't know what that looks like. We haven't seen that yet. But with that said, the max a guild can get is 100 players. And then on top of that, you can have two alliances. So you're looking at potential of 300 players. Now that is a lot, but I don't know. Do we know yet what the population of a single metropolis is? Because I'm assuming it's going to be a lot more than 300 players. So even though you have like these, this, this one. I think one... they said that it would have in that article that we just read earlier about um, clarifying the freeholds. I think it said there'd be like 20 counties. I forget the word they used for it, but they said oh, it's pretty um, much the same as a county. Baronies. Like barons? Yeah, barons. So barons, be, yeah. yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah, so so with. Which, I'm actually, not sure thought... how many freeholds one, each of those holds, but. <laughs> no, something, something to remember is that Steven came from a big guild. Like his experience from playing games is being in a guild. And that is something that he wants this game to have. And like, I think that's something too, to remember with, when it comes to ashes. And I think this was like, is this cause I see people kind of have this freak out moment of like, Oh fuck. But it's kind of like in the context of like our current MMOs, because yeah, as someone who only has one, two, three, four people to play with, that sounds fucking terrible. Like I can't compete <laughs> with this, but then you got to remember like, we're, we're supposed to be getting a game that harkens back to like older MMOs where the social part is a big thing. Who she's having me drink. Got to hydrate. I'm running out. <laughs> um, so, so with that being a big focus is having, you know, your, your family, which will be a smaller, almost like your tight Nick, the way I view it too is, is like, we tend to have smaller guilds, but like that family unit is even like kind of what we're used to. And then you'll have this bigger overarching guild that you'll be a part of. And then you'll have these alliances. So I don't know if that like the idea of like a Eve mega guild is going to be as threatening. I don't like it because we obviously we haven't tested. We don't know, but we don't know what it looks like to have a single guild inside of inside of one, um, you know, metropolis or what, that one area that's controlling all the vassals. So it's it's hard to know, like without some of those other things, what does it look like with that, that 300 person? And also too, like uh, one of the things we just saw on the article was that within um, these parcels that you can put down, there are guild halls. And I don't know how much those are going to be like how that's going to happen, but you might find that guilds actually probably maybe want to focus on that. I don't know what the pro if there's going to be processing in that as well. But, or you might see the guilds go here, they buy up the area around it. But like, there's a lot of variables that we don't quite know, but I do hear the guild thing come up quite a bit. And like I said, a lot of times that's always compared to Eve. And when I'm looking at it, it's just, it's not apples to apples because you're looking at something that could be a thousand players versus 300. And then you still have all these other people who can still rally up against these players. It's not like there's a faction or anything. We're, we're all free. So if there's if there's a bunch of people that are sick of their shit, they can all just band together, jump on them, and try to kick their ass. So it's it's uh, a yeah. so that, that's one I thing I wanted a, to point. I have a question about the alliances. So you're allowed two alliances. So say Chaos and Lace Cartel is alliance with Nuke Incorporated and Lord Incorporated. <laughs> but then Nuke and Lord have their alliance with us, but not each other. Then they have, do they have one more like extra person or extra guild they can then, because then that's like a branch of five. Yeah. So are you asking like how those branch off? <laughs> like, right. Like uh, it's going to turn into a tree pretty quick. <laughs> I'm not a hundred percent sure because that wouldn't still leave them open to war against the other one. And I feel like with, with groups that large, like I don't have the answer, so I'm going to bullshit and say some other things. <laughs> with a group that large, I think you will see a lot of backstabbing and infighting. I think you will see a lot of um, like these empires kind of rise of some of these larger guilds 
And then I think there's going to be some internal fighting. You're going to have some people that are going to like now that in this game, you could jockey for like position because why the fuck are you going to follow dickhead who never raids, never shows up on time anyway, but for some reason owns the guild. And you're like, you know what? Let's branch off. Let's make this other guild. So I feel like you'll see. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it's I like you're going to like I like Steven was saying too. like he wants to see espionage. He wants to see, you know, infight. Like he wants there to be that drama. Um, so that's that'll be yes to see like we have to see like how that's gonna work but yeah i don't know like, like th- oh yeah i was just gonna say imagine <laughs> <laughs> I, I was just thinking about it so like if you're if if you're in a guild and say you grind eight ten hours a day you, you're like raiding with them every time but maybe one of the officers is like the guild the guild uh leader's brother or something and so instead of giving that last node or that last freehold to you he decides to give it to his brother he's only right. playing four hours he's not clearing raid content you're gonna be furious man you're gonna you're gonna get upset and you're just gonna lose your stuff and you're gonna be like all right i'm, I'm bringing this guild down from the <laughs> oh yeah inside. you're gonna be pissed because <laughs> nepotism is, is gonna be now, the downfall yeah. Yeah, nepotism <laughs> is gonna be the downfall of like all these big guilds because it's like yeah my sister's brother cousin wanted this freehold all these guild leaders give giving their freeholds to their wives no. <laughs> yeah, <it's> like, yeah. <laughs> she doesn't play this game she Thank just wants to breed the animals the guys <laughs> uh yeah right, so fun. <laughs> Something Ben was saying, it got me thinking, like, is there is there going to be a possibility that that guild freeholds on these parcels will coincide with player owned freeholds? Like maybe one parcel of land can hold one guild freehold and one player owned freehold. I'm not and that sure. That separates the guilds from being able to just dominate. Let me. I have... don't want to get the guild freehold. I do have an image I can bring up real quick. Um, let me let me pull up the ashes uh, article that just came up. Bear with um, me, guys. With, I'm not set up to do with, this. The one with Dankwood Forest. Did it say Dankwood there's Forest? One. Yeah, there's Dankwood there's Forest one. in there. <laughs> All right. There's one guild freehold in every node. That's what it, it looks like. There's one in each parcel. Um, so let me source. Uh, I should have planned ahead. Oh, well. Let's see. Okay. Let's create new. Press. <laughs> All right, there we go. All right. Oh my God, that's so much bigger than what it looks like on the website. Let me. Uh... Oh, <laughs> oh my God, I think I just moved myself. Hold on, guys. We'll cut it in post. It'll look fine. Uh, fit <laughs> oh, the screen. God. Okay, here we go. <laughs> so the way that you guys can see this, it looks like the the guild hall because these are predetermined, right? These these already these are already here. So you, I don't know if you can customize. I don't really know what you're able to do with the guild halls. But the way it's going to work is you basically have a county, right? And in the center of those counties, because here's the, here's the main node. And inside these counties, you have one, I don't know if you guys are seeing this, if you guys have the stream up, um, I can drop this in the discord DM real quick. If you guys need I'm to look at it. it. Uh, okay. You guys got it. We can't see your cursor though. Hold on. Um, you're like, Oh, that's right. Cause I'm on the wrong screen. Oh, shit. <laughs> All right, guys, you don't have to deal. The big gray, big gray, big green hexagon thing. Um, That is the the node proper, right? Or the the, the main city. Um, What is it? Node name, whatever. And then you've got all these different guild halls that are in the center of these parcels, which is the barony. And then you've got it broken up by estates. Now, within those estates is where you can put those freeholds. So it looks like every... The way I would see it is that every barony is kind of run by this guild hall, right? Which looks like you can have one, two, three, four, five, six different guilds that are running those. I don't know if it might just be one guild hall per guild. We don't, don't know any information on that yet. A lot of times, Stephen will leak something and then it just seems to add more questions. <laughs> but <laughs> Velvet 2 win. He tries to All answer right. it with a, yeah. I, he, I know that he's supposed to have, they're supposed <laughs> to be doing a um, town hall. So hopefully we'll get some more answers. Uh, um, for that and then we'll have more shit to talk about um but yeah so what was the original question <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh god <laughs> pen said something True. um but yeah it looks like you'll basically have your guild hall and then freeholds around them i don't think they'll coincide on the same plot of land it is one guild hall per f- uh, guild freehold awesome wait one guild per hall per <laughs> guild freehold one guild i mean i don't know how to take that like one guild Parcel? per guild free Who, moving on <laughs> <laughs> um no 
how do you guys this is i don't know if i like this question but i'll ask it anyway um let's see does it before i ask any of these pre-written questions um lord do you have anything specific about the freeholds that you either feel positively or negatively about that you have an opinion on uh not really okay i haven't really absorbed all of the information yet we'll get we'll get in i'll, I'll ask you when we get to the the resource bags <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, it's going to be the heated topic. topic. I would say. <laughs> um, Annie, animal husbandry. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, go on. <laughs> Let me think. Okay, so... <laughs> okay, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask this question. Framing in this. As someone that wants to make money off of breeding mounts and wanting to put herself in a position to be known as uh, the best breeder, uh, place, best place to go to get bread or what, um, at a freehold. How do you think the exclusivity, <laughs> oh how do you think the exclusivity of freeholds influences the in-game economy? Um, I mean, it does have, it's going to make it more competitive. That's for sure. <laughs> Making it harder to get a freehold and craft high level stuff. So if you are one of those people who gets that, then you're going to have I don't know if I'm answering this question right. No, no, it's fine. There's no right. There's... <laughs> it's I'm fine. like, wait, did I understand this wrong? <laughs> no, I'm just I was, with um, it being exclusive. How do you think that basically in I guess and and too in the in the the framing of you want to make money off of sell, selling, you know, these rare mounts, and if you can be a grandmaster or a master with this freehold, would you not agree that having that be exclusive and extremely hard to obtain is going to benefit you? Um, based off of how it's going to affect the economy. It crushes your dreams. <laughs> it yeah. does crush your dreams. <laughs> like, I don't want to sell them. I just want to make them and do stuff. I know. I just want to, I just want to play with them. <laughs> um, Andy, I don't know. Get like tier five mount. <laughs> right. We got to get a tier five. Yeah, mount from exactly. somebody. <laughs> well, it's not going to be me. Cause I don't play that much. <laughs> oh, three kids. <laughs> she says that you got more time than any, probably any of us i'm gonna be play. i'm gonna be perusing the foreclosure market that's what i'm gonna be doing <laughs> she said okay first off well actually we can get into uh the, the you know that topic but any says this but like i'm wow i had like one like when when we first started playing uh dragonflight i oh my god hi steven hello i think annie will be able to get a freehold that if she wants i think she will be too oh my god my heart just stopped hopefully um, we'll get it for her oh god <laughs> oh god um <laughs> anyway <laughs> um i was talking oh yeah sandal lord so <laughs> yeah so annie um annie's saying that she's not gonna have the time to play but meanwhile when we first got back into dragon flight i had um I've got my like one level 60 and she's like on her fifth. And I'm like, come on. I'm like, she's like, you just got to play other classes. It will be more fun. I'm like, I can't even keep up with you. So if anyone's going to degen the game and be able to get her <laughs> freehold and be able to do all the animal husbandry that she wants. See, it's the only, the Here's only female on the show. Here's how it's going to happen. I'm going to have an alt on like every single server. <laughs> I know. She, she talked about that level. too. She's like, we have an alt. she's like, we need to have our, we need to have our streaming alt. And then the game that we actually play. I'm like, it's the same thing for me. I don't have the, <laughs> I'm looking to be a lot of time to DJ in one. Um, we'll so. Just... Anybody well, else want to pick up? Does anyone else want to pick up on, um how the exclusivity could influence the in-game economy. So, I mean, I do see it like it's going to be that like prestigious thing if you do get, you know, artisanship with your um, professions when you do achieve a freehold and stuff. But I, I personally feel like I want it to be like, I don't want it to be easy to obtain. Like, that's not what I want, but I don't see why the level cap, like, why do you have to be level 50 to that if you're just as you know, able to complete that quest line and afford one at level 20, like, why not? <laughs> You're just asking because Steven's here. We already went over that. <laughs> now she's like, leaks, please. <laughs> um, we just, Steven's we like, already did, did that argument. Did the article? Did I read it? <laughs> I, I did, did read the article. We did. We, I perused <laughs> it. <laughs> but that's the thing. With them being so exclusive, too, like, it's, it's, and we've talked about this. This is something we've talked about a lot on the show, which you know, going back to like my first time playing World of Warcraft and showing up in Orgrimmar and seeing all these people in amazing raid gear 
and being like, what is this? Like when you're going through and you're going to the world, right. You're going to see that in, in like, I feel like there is this big, this panic moment, right? Everyone's kind of like bracing, like, oh no, I'm never gonna have this thing. But like, it's awesome to have that thing to strive for and to work hard for. And it's nice that like your whole thing is like, I have a part of the world. Like my claim to fame right now is that one, I'm better than you because look, I literally (laughs) have this one, what's 1.5 acres now. Was that what it was? Yeah, 1.5 acres, which awesome. I love that. We were talking about how they need to be bigger. So that's awesome. But Great yes, I was so, so excited about that. <laughs> but yeah, so the fact that you have this and you can say, I grind for this. I worked hard for this. And also like all these other people are coming for it because they're in that na- neighboring metropolis and they're getting real pissed that they don't have any spots. So they're going to come over and they're going to try to topple that so they can grab up some of these um grab up some of the freeholds siege them do all those other things so i think having that conflict and having this thing that other people want because it's a rare resources make the game better like the fact that not everybody can get this not everyone's going to get a trophy it makes it might not make someone who only has two hours a week play excited because and, and the thing is too like they have their games there are so many games where you can go put a coin in something and you get out like oh yeah dopamine but like, especially for me, um, and I'm saying this from someone who like, I might not even work that like, I, I don't do crafting. I don't really, I'm, I'm not a big thing. Like it's for me, I think Nuke and I were saying this uh, before we started rolling is that we're probably not even going to really try to get freeholds all that much. I'm, I'm going to help facilitate any getting them because I want to kick ass mount. But like when it comes <laughs> to mine, like I just, I really care about questing, raiding, and then like going to a tavern and seeing if we ha- we can get, you know, sick from drinking too much um <laughs> player engagement you know yeah but yeah so like i think, I think that's th- a big part of it is like you're gonna have that the supply and demand of freeholds like maybe you go siege and fr- you go siege a node just because you want one because you destroy the node you grow that node yourself and then you're like man i'm gonna buy a freehold right away because you know I've, I've done everything that i need to to accomplish it and i think in, a, in you know it encourages player engagement player feedback and like everything just all ties together with that pvp system i think it's i think it's going to be good yes player, player friction. friction player friction is always <laughs> a very friction. good thing yeah yeah um let's see that yeah, not go everyone ahead. is gonna need uh because it's built specifically for the artisanship system so it's focusing targeting the players who are looking to invest a lot of time in the artisan system and not everyone is going to want to do that or be doing that Right. So that was, that's one of, um, one of Annie's biggest, uh, fears, I guess, or concern. Don't, don't mess with me like that, Steven. Oh my God. <laughs> um, I think one of, Maybe uh, hard to skip to beat. I am, ah, Jesus. <laughs> Talking I'm about trying to, edit, to get Steven. I'm going to have to edit all the fan girling and me blushing <laughs> off the stream. Um, so I think one of Annie's one of, one of her biggest concerns, I, I don't want to talk for you. Um, one of your biggest concerns just to kind of leading it that way was that you've talked about how, uh, i don't even know <laughs> how Steven, I would... for real? <laughs> yeah if you're for real i will i will throw you a twitch guest star right now oh my god in before baited yeah in before baited. <laughs> waiting in silence oh god <laughs> are we sure this is this is the real steven sharif i don't even oh my god is any of this real <laughs> i have no idea is any god of this damn. real, is any of it real? <laughs> um Oh my God. We will see. Mio wants it. <laughs> yeah, we all want it, I think. You can always hang up on him. Yeah, that's true. I don't. Guys. We're all waiting with bated breath. Everyone. Uh... I know. One second. Um, let's see. Do it. <laughs> do it. Everybody's like, do it, do it. Just do it. Uh... <laughs> Oh my god. It's gonna I feel like we're gonna get end up getting trolled. Um <laughs> make sure it'll it'll be, it'll make, make make sure it's yeah, as long as no one's <laughs> flashing sure the ball. You know what? Or something. <laughs> um I think let me let me do this. Oh my god. I feel like we're gonna get trolled, but it, it's fine because of the way that I'm setting this up. Wouldn't Is he not on my friends list? Trolled. I don't think so. <laughs> not friends with Steven. Eighty nine followers. All right, invite sent. Right row. Right. I swear to God, this te- I'm gonna lose my mind. My heart is racing right now. I was here. I was here. I know. Surgeon says I was here. 
it was July of 2023. It's okay it's because I've got. Yeah. That's I literally as I edit, I can cut the whole thing. So, <laughs> it seems seamless, like a nip. No. Oh my god! All right, hold on. Speaking of tangents, we just got. Yeah. To... <laughs> oh, no. Oops! Give me one second. Oh I god, gotta... where'd I go? <laughs> hold on, give me one second. Any no. <laughs> Messes me on Discord. Oh my! Holy shit! Oh my god, <laughs> no. dude! I'm I'm going to fucking cry. Um. Oh, okay. Yep. Oh, Jesus Christ! All right. Um. Yeah. No. Go ahead. Uh. Oh my. So I sent the no uh, Twitch guest star. Oh my. Uh, uh, guys, I'm trying not to be such a fangirl right now, play, but I'm gonna lose cool. my feet. Yeah. Cool. I'm, I can't. I. Oh my god. We did it. Oh, I'm dead. <laughs> Per can minute. i add you through so like um come down be a hero for us i'm no um uh so you mean just audio um no cursing i uh, trying to think of how <laughs> no cursing. how i can um uh, i'm trying to think of how i can do because if we do it through the guest star it's set up i'm trying to think of how i can route all the audio <laughs> just trying to um Add to, it's, it, we're not doing Discord right now. This is all through Guest Star, so that I'm trying to rack my brain at the moment of um, one. Steven's talking to me right now on my stream, and I'm trying to figure out how to get him on my show. So that's <laughs> something. Um, Flustered. <laughs> I think. Okay, I think I should have a way. Oh, I'm just trying to think of how to do all the audio because I think Steven will be able to hear me, but I don't know if he's going to be he able to hear everybody else. Can we, um, because Lord doesn't have his portrait up, we could move his name over and then use that for It's square. all a single, it's all a single thing put together. Oh, it is? Yeah. yeah and if, if Steven needs Discord, then it makes it a little bit more challenging. I could, I mean, we could, yeah, I'm trying Discord. to think of how, I mean, the audio might be out of sync, but I could try, we, we, we would all just do a Discord call. So everyone can just mute their mic. Uh, I can mute. No, how's that gonna work? Just switch the disc. I'm trying to figure out. Give me one second. I'm trying to figure <laughs> it out. Think on the fly. Steven, St Steven, is that a is that a complete no on on the guest star? Because it would make my life so much easier right now. <laughs> trying to figure this out. <laughs> um, let me try. Okay, because I swear it will make it so much easier. It's it's super easy to set up. Dude, what is happening right now? <laughs> It's okay. I'm uh, um, cool, collected. <laughs> oh my god, no. Okay, so like, Annie knows me. He's about, one of us. I, well, I know. He's, he's a gamer. He but like, a so game. don't mess it up. I'm already messed it up. Richie, why are you? Why is everyone in the stream right now? <laughs> god damn it! Oh my god. Uh, so like, I know I don't know how many of you guys have heard this story, but there was um, Annie and I went to a concert, and it was uh, one of my favorite bands. Posture, posture check we're not doing all those things right now um <laughs> yeah have my list of questions for a pop too yeah yeah i definitely have those questions ready i definitely Just have questions chat ready GPT to, uh, really quick yeah hey chat gpt <laughs> um the game i decided to make what do I <laughs> yeah it definitely has crashed jamie.exe <laughs> yeah. oh you guys need to stop at the posture checks oh god i am i sorry this is a really surreal moment i just uh oh god it's very cool it's gonna be good i'll calm down when ago. steven's on that's when you guys I just gotta get to work <laughs> yep a few months ago you were you were joking about how you would never get steven on the show i know i didn't think we were brand friendly enough <laughs> i know <laughs> oh no we're, we're we lovable swear. <laughs> <laughs> i mean annie was talking too that i need to start like bleeping out on my um on oh, my cousin. Um, so Steven, the way that uh, t guest star works, if you haven't used it is um, you just open up Chrome, go to Twitch, and then you just connect through there. And now uh, you should see an invite. Um, and then I will also, this is going to be such a pain in the ass to edit. And I just like, <laughs> don't even care. I don't even care. I'm throwing this whole episode away. It's just starting with Steven jumping into the stream. Once I get this figured out, just throw up the raw footage. It'll be fine. You've never heard of guest star. <laughs> guest star makes things so much easier. So if you guys haven't used Twitch guest star, why is, why is Annie on twice? Is she on, on twice? twice? Is she? I don't think so. Am I talking twice? Like, is it echoing? 
Oh yeah, you're actually you are. You're coming through my um you're coming through <laughs> I just my microphone. realized you spelled Lord's name wrong. Did I? I don't think so. I think that's how Lord spells the <laughs> No, you <he> did. <laughs> <laughs> did I? Oh my god. Guys, don't point this out right now. <laughs> did I spell it wrong? Right? Hold on. Look, we don't got the budget yet. I did spell it wrong. My god. <laughs> no echo there. Okay. <laughs> Oh my! Yeah, I don't have it. I, you know, the amount of time it's going to take Steven to figure this part out. Um, all right, send the invite again. I say I might be able to like quickly create a uh, five panel. Doing it Steven's just going to go. Um, just slap him in the middle. It'll be fine. <laughs> Let me see. All right, Steven, I just sent the invite again. And then while that's happening, I need to copy that browser source. Not have a heart attack in the middle of doing this. You got a commercial. Oh. Yeah, I got a commercial too. <laughs> Pause. Hold. The, stop the stream. I know. Subscribe. subscribe. To <laughs> yeah, everyone, subscribe quick. <laughs> yeah. Steven doesn't um, have Twitch Turbo. What? Okay. What is? <laughs> okay. Whoops. One second, guys. Hold on. Doing it live. Doing it live. Let me. Uh... All right, sending out the invite again. I know I'm about to. I'm probably about to just. This doesn't work. Action is already taken. Um, to host another mod, just perform the action. All right. Um, it should when you're when you're on Twitch, you'll see up on your notifications. It should say that I sent you a. A um invite. Yeah, it's like in the little inbox thingy. <laughs> awesome. Thank you for the. Aw, thanks. <laughs> it's really gifted stuff. <laughs> Surgeon General to Steven. Yeah, it should be in your inbox. Oh my God. God. Oh. <laughs> All right. Well, Steven's going to go right fucking there. Search in general saving us. <laughs> Thank you so much. <clears throat> oh, my God. Ooh. Jesus Christ. Hello. How's it going, Steven? <laughs> it's going well. How are you? We are great. Thank Good. you for joining the show. <laughs> surprised yeah, honestly I, <laughs> I got i got home uh and i saw the notification on twit on twitter and i jumped in and was listening for a little bit and i thought hey what the hell oh, <laughs> I just awesome jump Thank on you. and chat with you. you guys are having a fun conversation yeah we yes, uh awesome. yeah we were gonna dive into the, the two of the hot topic things which was the player response to some of the freehold um information the newer information then as well as uh the one after this is the the resource bags um i which like i like how uh i like how Vish said that margaret right now is legit the dog in the flaming house meme <laughs> <laughs> everything's okay it's like this is fine yeah because we've always good. joked that if like because our whole show is based off of tangents that if we could get you on like we figured maybe if we got a couple tangents going that maybe some spoilers come <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> no i'll try to be good i'll try to be good <laughs> so yeah what'd you guys think about the article today um really I, liked it. I actually liked it a lot it was thorough and answered a lot of questions i had had and there was some stuff in there that i wasn't aware so that was really cool yeah i think yeah, we were was good i no, Oop, go, go ahead. ahead sorry oh no <laughs> steven you have the floor go ahead <laughs> i was just gonna say we had intended to, to release it last week but um, I wanted to include a little bit more meat behind the system um, and I think get a little bit more uh, specific on exactly how these things are intended to work for Alpha 2. So uh, I, thought, I thought people would like that. But anytime you kind of venture into that territory of getting really specific, that's when, you know, you run the risk of going a bit in depth on a system and the broader audience that might not you know, fully perhaps understand the intricacies or interconnections that exist between the different systems and the intent, they might read into something and think, well, wait a minute, why is that being done, right? So the more in-depth you can get something, the more difficult it is to communicate verbally or in written context without being in the game and experience it and seeing those systems, you know, come to life, so to speak. Yeah, that's something we've kind of talked about too, is that there's there's so many other systems that we don't know how they interplay together especially like with nodes being a big part of freeholds and everything like that without knowing with hopefully we're seeing that next month um without knowing <laughs> this month this month is it, yeah this oh my god yeah, yeah. this month um, oh, so yeah, without really knowing <laughs> like the intricacies of that too like it's hard to know like some of this does kind of come at you like 
it's it's one portion of in this overarching system so it is harder to know like well how does this actually work especially without also having your hands on it too it's i think that's something we've kind of keep coming back to a bit with these questions is like you know we don't fully understand how all this works and and what it takes to get to get freeholds with especially with you guys right. introducing the idea of like this three layer system right and things like that um yeah, one the, thing you know oh go ahead no, no you go no, ahead please no feel free to was, cut, I, cut me off <laughs> no, just I, was, talking. I, was, I was just gonna say that um yeah you know even though the system as described um is intricate and kind of you know gives the intent behind how it's going to be developed for alpha 2 the most important thing to remember is that like alpha 2 is really the testing grounds for a lot of the uh, more minute details of how a particular system works and you can change a lot of those details without actually needing to change the feature that's been developed right these are variables that exist within the code that we have control over so that when we want to iterate upon it um, it's easy to do iterations and some of those iterations can feel very impactful to the system overall so alpha 2 really is meant to kind of gauge this initial approach and then we're afforded the ability to kind of change that drastically by tuning and changing some of the aspects of the uh of the specifics of the system right so one of those things is i saw people saying like well <clears throat> you know when when you think about how many nodes there are and how many counties or excuse me how many uh, baronies um, that we saw that exist on this map <clears throat> that equates to like 500 plus guild halls well, one of the aspects of the guild hall um, uh, uh, access is that only a limited subsect of the guild halls available around the node are available concurrently. Oh, okay. There's many choices of those six, right? So you might only have two that might be available at fifth level and then three at sixth level of a node. Um, and the guilds have an opportunity to select from the six available, which three are going to be active. All right, that's sweet. Yeah, because we were yeah. just talking about that. We were like, we don't know if, how many of these can be active or how it works. But I mean, that whole that diagram that you guys put out, I really enjoyed seeing that and kind of like having that grasp of like, okay, so these things are kind of be centered around that. Um, yeah. I had, what did I have? Oh, yeah. So th what you were bringing up about having like, you know, adjusting the dials and, and levers and, and that was one of the concerns that was kind of brought up with our, in our Discord was mm -hmm. like, well, if they've been working on this, but now they're asking for this, like how much effort needs to go in. And I remember from streams ago of like you guys talking about how you want to have these, you know, kind of an easier access of we're going to be able to adjust and iterate like kind of on the fly. Cause mm -hmm. I believe at one point you guys even said, even when servers were live, that was how you wanted to adjust and tune that you'd still in the background, be able to uh, manipulate things as you guys saw things kind of come online or if this works or that doesn't work or, you know, uh, things of that nature. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, a lot of the uh, a lot of what we're providing and how these systems are built are very data driven and don't require us to, let's say, repackage a client and deliver that update to the user for us to adjust data on the back end of the game and do that during runtime. Um, so we can actually uh, we can actually create a lot of different environments of testing for a particular system within a running alpha 2 um, without having to let's say bring the servers down repackage and deliver an update to the user oh cool yeah right i'm trying i'm tr my i'm hearing you talk <laughs> and it's like blowing my mind right now um <laughs> <laughs> So recovering uh, so, from the shock. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> How do you guys uh, feel about the, you know, one of the biggest things I saw over the course of the last couple of weeks since we've, you know, had that stream and and we've been gauging kind of the community's response to that is this is what appears to me as kind of like an aversion uh, to a degree of what has been for a long time one of the central tenants and and core pillars of the game, which is this idea of risk versus reward, exclusivity, kind of scarcity that exists. You know, not everybody gets a trophy, but I think that this example of the freehold um, system kind of being shown is that a lot of people want the ability to own a piece of land and to engage in these core gameplay loops of farming and and of livestock and that type of interaction, owning a home and customizing that location. 
And when it's been resurfaced that, you know, these these freeholds are exclusive to a degree, that they're achievements that you have to strive for and that limitation, there's a bit of pushback. Uh, what has your guys' thoughts kind of been about that? So, so for me, oh, you go ahead. Go oh, ahead. no, you can go ahead. No, go ahead. I'll go next. <laughs> no, go ahead. Oh, I'll, I'll remember mine. Well, I had, <laughs> um, I was going to say, so I, I'm a big fan of like high risk, high reward, like Jamie and I, I think definitely like live our lives that way to an extent like we just up and moved from new hampshire to kentucky on a whim like because we oh, just wanted wow. something new like yeah like and people are like why'd you move here and we're like just, just felt like it kind of you know like that's but, um, kind of cool so, i like the spont yeah. spontaneity of that that's yeah awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so like it's nice having that in a video game and like i think in a lot of ways like world of warcraft making exclusive mounts like available now through twitch drops and stuff like that like is a big shame and it's yeah it really hurts the integrity of the game and stuff. So with Ashes of Creation, the fact that they are having, you know, I say they, but <laughs> you <laughs> and your project are um, having like that high risk, high reward, like not everybody gets a trophy mentality is like really, really great. And like, I I love it for the freeholds, but I think my point of concern with it is it being max level, like mm, in order yeah. to obtain one, which is going to lead to a bunch of people love, level rushing. Right. because they want to get one first and then they're not going to yeah. enjoy the game you guys are building right. as much as that, they would otherwise. You know, it's funny actually that you, that you mentioned that because that was for a time, a lively debate on our design team um, about whether or not there should be a level gate um, essentially from even preventing uh, the potential for ownership. The, the reason why I chose um, to keep it at level 50 for now um, is because there are alternate systems that provide access at lower levels uh, through permission setting, right? So it's one thing to own the home. It's another thing to access the contents and to continue progression, let's say, in the processing profession you might want to gain mastery in. Um, that mastery process leaves the nodes at around at around like level 30 in the in the leveling experience for a processing profession. And so um, one of the debates on the design team was whether or not we should reduce the uh, level requirement down to level 30 so that there's a seamless transition from node-based processing progression and the freehold uh, capability of progression. Um, the reason why I think that there's never gonna be a way to avoid rushing levels um, is because anytime you have a vertical power progression in a game, there is always going to be a reason to rush leveling. Um, and that's just kind of the standard MMO experience that many of us have have had, right? Uh, lot, not all of us do it because not all of us really care about the vertical progression there um, or have the time and ability to do it, right? But um, generally, so long as there's a vertical power structure in place, you're going to have an incentive to rush that leveling process. Um, and the idea isn't that you will need to rush leveling to 50 in Ashes of Creation in order to achieve a freehold. Because you have to also remember that the world structure is what predicates the availability of freeholds. So as nodes come on, <coughs> excuse me, as nodes come online over time, people will reach level 50 before the last node has reached level three right before even half the nodes probably have reached level three before even probably a quarter of the nodes have reached level three and as those nodes continue to progress and grow those freeholds will slowly be trickling out to the populations which gives time for the people that didn't perhaps let's say rush leveling to 50 still be capable of purchasing freeholds within those territories and one other thing i would say is that there's a bit of a strategy when it comes to prioritization of what of what you're going to do in a game like Ashes. A lot of people will bolt to 50. They won't care about establishing their infrastructure. I don't know if you ever play like board games or any Forex strategy games, stuff like that, any resource management or action economy games. But oftentimes early in those games, you have to kind of make a decision, right? If it's like a, a let's say it's like some type of, you know, victory point structure, you sometimes have an option to get victory points or you can establish your foundation and you can start building up your economy and you can start building up your capabilities without going for the gold to start because then you're gonna slingshot once you have all that infrastructure in place and go for that level 50. 
those are viable options because of the way that freeholds trickle out onto the server with the world state being progressed over time. It might be a smarter choice not to rush to 50, but rather to take your time establishing that foundation so that when you reach level 50 and the rest of the nodes are now progressing to the point where they can release freeholds, you will have the best possible chance of contending for that freehold because you spent the time early not to rush to 50, but rather establish that foundation. Like there, you know, the aspect of this strategy is an important component of how you might achieve the freehold. The other thing to keep in mind is that, and this is something that I didn't, I, I don't know if I elaborated on in the article or not, but um, <clears throat> there are, there are bound currencies that exist within the game. Right. And then there is the general currencies that's usually achieved through certificates and the ability to trade those certificates in to get gold um, that we've talked about in the past. But some of those bound currencies are like favor. You know, these are points that you achieve doing some divine quest lines, participating in divine story arcs or honor, which is like PVP oriented uh, unique currency, stuff like that. Right. The most common denominator of availability for freeholds through the auction is going to be through gold. However, there will be a sub select of freehold um uh, options that are available in each node based on the node type that will correspond to one of those bound currencies in addition to gold so what we do there is we kind of spread out the availability of freeholds to different play styles and different focuses so the player that might rush to level 50 will they might have an advantage when bidding on gold-based freeholds but they may not have the advantage of the favor player or the honor player oh, uh, who is going okay. <laughs> to be progressing within those play styles, right? So the idea is that we're not reserving freeholds for the top 10% of levelers. We're reserving freeholds for the top 10% across the multiple different play paths that exist within the game. And this spreads out that ownership across different play styles. So all right, that's I like all that I answer. needed to hear. That's so good. I like yeah. that answer a lot, <laughs> especially too, like because we we do lack some of the context to go like oh like I didn't even think of, yeah once once you know level threes are coming on, or level three nodes are coming on like most of us will probably be level fifty to begin with, so like that rush, really at least for the people first come because obviously it's going to be a different experience to those as they join a year later because everything the world's going to be different like that but also those people are probably going to rush anyway because they've got friends that they have in there. And like any of, I, I said this early in the, the stream too, like I already know that I'm going to degen the game when it first comes out to where <laughs> I'm going to, like that's just the type of player I am where I will try, it, it. everything in me will say stop and try to enjoy everything. But like I'm going to try to push myself to get towards, because I love seeing that, that you know, you, you see the numbers go up. You're like, oh, good. So numbers go up, good. So once or it hits I'm 50. more leisurely. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so I just have to drag any along. Um, God, that was, that was a huge wealth of information that I'm, I'm trying to take in. And I think that did answer <laughs> so many of some of the mystery, I guess, behind it, because we, we were, um, we'd also brought up too about how people felt about the three layer bidding system. But like I said, we kind of lost, we didn't have some of that context. So, mm -hmm. and this kind of goes back to what you were saying earlier that the, the, the streams kind of do reach a broader audience where people yeah. like us who obviously are making content or people that are watching an obscure podcast to like, we're really tuned into a lot of things. So I do think having like an article like this also was, was so much was, was really beneficial to see all this in-depth things. But I also think like some of us are also theory crafters. So then we see this and we're like, wait, okay. So, but now how does that work? So then yeah, we end up walking away with questions, right? Walking yeah. away with yep. a million more questions. And, <laughs> and the thing, I think yes. the thing that always comes back to it is like, we just have to wait till some of these things we're not going to know until we have it in our hands. We're able to touch it, able to see yeah. things and say, okay, this does feel good. This does make sense where we, we yeah, are in it. Yeah. And that's yeah. what I was trying to hit on early, right? Is that like when you start to pull a thread and that thread is game design specifics, right? That thread just doesn't stop yeah. because the way that ashes <laughs> is created is that, in order to create a solid identity and a comprehensive play experience, all of these systems are developed in such a way where max interdependency is aimed for, right? 
And that means that this thread connects to a lot of different things. Like we just talked about bound currencies. We talked about node progression. We talked about limited selection of, of the guild halls. We talked about family interactions and permission sets. We talked about maximum level progression across the grandmaster professions. Like this choice, these, these intricate details of the system, they reverberate throughout the rest of the game design. And in order for us to have a solid play experience, and it's impossible to communicate this within a single monthly update, or if we were writing articles about all the game design all the time, you know, we would just have a, a constant flux of community interaction, debate, you know, and I don't know how healthy that is to have at this point uh, leading into Alpha 2 when the experience is had from a tactile perspective as opposed conversationally, right? And in order to kind of see these systems in concert with one another and determine whether or not um, the choices made achieve the goal of the system or the systems, um, that is something that is required to be really more part of playtesting. And so I'm always hesitant with streams like last month's or with articles like this to really get too deep, to get too in depth with what we have planned with these systems. Um, because they provide an opportunity to muddy the water or create a bit of noise around really what the goals are of the game, right? Trusting that the developers are making the best decisions possible with how these systems are gonna interact with one another. And I know that's a tall order given some of the games we've played in the past. Um, but you know, trusting that that, that that conceptually is being articulated in such a way that maintains the identity and the core pillars of the game um, and then when Alpha 2 comes out and it's in our hands, that's when the feedback is most valuable because it's then given in context, right? It's not specifically focused on one particular aspect. Yeah, I think when you go too deep too, people can hold on sometimes to those details. And then if it does change, then they get upset. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's like a game in so, development can't iterate. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> Be interpreted as set in stone. Right. Yep. Exactly. And I mean, we saw that we saw that just this, uh, you know, it's so funny, actually hilarious. Um, this week, I didn't I didn't, uh, you know, it's just a really busy week and I didn't have an opportunity to kind of take a look at the planned socials uh, on on Twitter and, and the other social platforms uh, from our community team. And uh, there was a post that was made Wednesday morning. I woke up, I was, it was like 5.30. I was, you know, getting ready to kind of start the day. 6 a.m., this, this scheduled post goes out on Twitter and I'm reading it and it just has a picture of the uh, inventory system. And it says, what do you think about this, right? And I'm like, <laughs> oh my God, I cannot even believe the flood that's about to happen. Like, <laughs> so I, I, I immediately go on and I'm like, wait, let me give context. And then I requote it and I put it on the ashes. But, you know, obviously it starts a, it's, it just starts a deluge of experiences that aren't necessarily reflective of the intent behind the system in ashes but do represent the experiences that players have had in other games and they take that as a one-to-one -one the moment they see kind of the perspective of the inventory but again there's a particular reason for why that inventory system is intended to exist within ashes and and part of that is from the aspect of you know everything in the world is gatherable and there is a land management system that exists behind those gatherable things. The land management system kind of takes into account how players are interacting with the environment, how many of the resources they're withdrawing from the world, and that decreases the spawn rate within certain localities as those things go too high. So there can be a degree of economic warfare by sending players out into zones where you want to mitigate you know, collection of resources, you send your players out there to take all those resources, and then that diminishes the land management score of that particular zone. And so when you think about other games that have had uh, systems, um, such as being able to gather anything from the world, one of two things usually arises. Either those players, whoops, uh-oh, I didn't touch my computer for a second. Oh, you're, you're still here. Oh, no. <laughs> you're still here. Okay. <laughs> you're still here. Um, uh, one, of the, one, yeah, one, of, one of two things either happens. Either uh, people just at all times are expected to gather and, and collect things when they're out in the wild, like we saw in a recent game, where if you're not doing that, you're not, not the most optimal. Or they impose kind of a, a hard limit 
throttle like a labor system or you know something that mitigates how much you can do a thing. Um, our approach with kind of addressing that necessity was let's talk about inventory management. And if a player is going to leave a node and go out and start adventuring, if everything's gatherable and the only restriction is your tools and the level of mastery within that particular gathering profession, um, then what's to stop them from ever acquiring everything? Well, there's kind of two primary methods by which you can approach that, either through a weight management system or through a spatial system. And when you talk about the complexities available through like, let's say bag progression, weight is a very monocentric aspect, monocentric kind of uh, um, uh, restriction. Whereas when you have stack size and shape size, and you can cater certain bag types based on slot management to be more conducive towards particular types of shapes and have varying stack sizes available, it's not about the mini game of how do I organize that because there's an auto sort feature, but rather it's more focused around what types of bags am I going to equip during that time and how am I going to determine which resources I should interact with when I'm out in the wild, knowing that before I can gather everything, I will have to go back to a storage location and deposit what I have gathered, right? Now it's about how do I manage time? Because the time is traveling back and forth from those storage locations, right? So, so like, you know, it's difficult to kind of explain that in a post or in a, um, <laughs> Uh, in a in a live stream to a degree, uh, and it's and it's difficult to get kind of you know context for that, especially if you're not as an engaged user or an engaged audience member. If you're just seeing this on the sideline, and you're like, wait a minute, I I've played Tetris before. I don't like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So that that was something because that was actually one of the things that we were uh, gonna discuss tonight. Um, and I was kind of a proponent of it because I think I kind of took it from the way that like kind of seeing how certain games handle things where, yeah, you can have a stack size or it can be by weight, but you see these people strip off armor. Some of these other games don't have PVP. You watch this one dude run around in a circle constantly cutting down all the trees, <laughs> sniping things from you. And you're like, this is, this is <laughs> like, why is this happening? Why is there nothing exactly. preventing you from doing that? So I, I did see a lot like that people seem kind of split of not liking this idea of having this spatial um, design for the bags. But when I'm seeing that, I'm like, okay, so now I've got a plan. It's like, I, Anything that seems to make something a little bit more difficult, I'm all about it. So I'm like, okay, yeah. so if I want to go out mining, I got to make sure I've got my mining bags. I got to have this. I got to be willing to potentially drop this thing to pick this up. Um, Correct. Especially when you think about it from a PvP perspective as well, right? Some of those bags might have increased times to interact with a player corpse, right? And you can choose to perhaps have less capacity, less stack size, less slot availability for the certain types of gatherables you may want to acquire in exchange for an increased uh, interaction time for other players that might try to loot that bag, giving you time to reach it and take back your belongings, right? Oh, that's cool. Um, or, or if in the middle of a fight, they see a corpse on the ground and they're like, wait a minute, I want to grab that. Well, if I got to spend 10 seconds to interact with that corpse and there's combat going on, like, this is an opportunity strategically for you to recapture the grounds, for you to recapture the battlefield, right? You want to think about those types of interactions. How do you add layers of strategy to engagements? And, and there's ways to do that through inventory management as well. It's funny that you brought that up because I, I think Annie was looking at that and someone someone on Twitter was like, great, so it's just going to be an endless thing back going back and forth yanking. But I think they were being facetious. But Annie was like, she was like, yeah, actually, I think I just got sold actually, on using that. <laughs> I um I I don't mind the Tetris system, but I think logically I like the encumbrance aspect of it. But then once I read that and was like, oh, like that's just gonna make it so somebody can't just kill you and like run off with your stuff exactly. in five seconds. They have to actually organize it so that it gives yes. you a chance to come back and get your stuff back. So I was like, all right, or I'm they sold. Man, or, or they might not even have the slots available. You know, right, what I mean? might, like, yeah, it might be right. something they can't so even. So now they got to organize and drop stuff, and yeah, yeah, so. it, it it might even be the case <laughs> that their particular bag space doesn't have available location for a three by one log, right? And you're a lumberjack, and they see you just chopping down these trees, and you're like, "There's no point in me engaging with this person because I have nothing to gain due to my capacity, right? I know what I'm kitted for. I chose these bags." Like, you know, there's a there's an additional layer then of of strategy there that I think is is interesting. 
And I, I think right. so probably yeah, definitely because, seeing that part definitely changed my mind on that a bit. <laughs> and I think probably because most people are used to, I can grab whatever I want. I can shove this all in my bag. I have space for all this. I might have a reagent bag or whatever, but it's like not understanding like, what is the point of this? But now you've got one, now you're looking at time to kill time to loot. And then having that time to now reclaim something that was potentially lost from you to keep that player fiction. So yeah, you might have that ongoing back and forth and it might be a, a thing of who wants to accrue the most XP debt. <laughs> but like yeah. i can see that the, the reason now too behind that and i, I think that's something that again kind of gets lost in context and, and i think it's just because you know not to put you in a bad spot but like i feel like current mmos spoon feed us a lot you don't need to answer if that you feel the same way but um i love when gamer <laughs> steven comes out so if you want to you want to you know. <laughs> no no i try not to get in trouble i know i, I notice <laughs> i i notice that phelan says that's only if the player respects the corruption system again um, trying to communicate the intent of a system. If players in large do not respect the corruption system, then the implementation of that corruption system has failed yep. and needs to be iterated upon. So first we must determine what is the intent of a system. Then we architect the system in order to achieve that intent. And if it doesn't, then we iterate on that system. Like that. that is, the, that is how you go about creating these these interactions, right? So um, corruption is a huge deterrent to open world PVP outside of opt-in events. Um, and that's not to say that players can't use it. It's to say that the intent is when used, it is extremely minimal in your play experiences. Perhaps a person within a month might experience in their playtime 2% of interaction with a corrupt player. 98% of their playtime is going to be with non-corrupt players, right? And so that's how we kind of iterate. How do we achieve what the intent is behind the system? Right. And even going along that lines, I, th I think there there's this particular game where a lot of people have had their PVP experience in, and there are no player protections in that <laughs> whatsoever. You can just oh, yeah. be out the world. They kill an NPC, they gank, they, they do this. And I feel like that's where a lot of that fear comes from because I don't hear it from other certain groups of MMO players, but this one particular game, and I, I feel like there are just a lot of people that 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 PVP and, it, and it's one of those things, too, where it just kind of feels tacked on where everything with ashes, like even even now that we're even talking about why the spatial bag systems there, everything seems like it's so baked into the core systems and so thought out and so meticulous of like, this is why we're doing this. That, that is, I think it's harder for people to grasp that because a lot of these systems, when you do see in like, and it's not even just the, like say like poor game design, some of the is limitation of what they could do when the games were made, when they were made where you couldn't yeah. implement certain systems like this, where now there's so much more technology. There's, there's so many more things that we can do. So I think people do have a harder time grasping like, well, how's this even going to work? Cause it didn't work in this game, yeah. but then you're like, but it wasn't in that game. Yeah, I, you know, I, I kind of equate it to, um, I don't know, you ever sit down with your friends and you're about to open up a brand new board game, right? You're all sitting around the table and you have this one friend who's like digging through the rule book and they're like reading it aloud, every single it's sentence. Me. And you're just, and, and some people respond very positively to that. I call those the developer watchers. Those are people who are able to, to watch a development in progress because they love talking about it. They're very auditory related listeners. Like they are capable of following along. However, some people at the table are like, yeah, let's just get, let's just start playing. We'll figure it out when we start playing. This right? definitely not. <laughs> that's Jamie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, call so that there's right some people that are like that too. And that's okay. Like We all are different types of learners. But what you described, it's not so much that I feel people can't grasp the systems. It's that I feel people are different in the sense of how they wished to grasp it. Some yeah, yeah. people want to grasp it by playing it, by touching it, by feeling it, right? And other people want to grasp it by talking about it, by reading through it, by understanding it, you know, in a different way. And the harsh reality is, is that this, you know, development journeys are are not for everybody. That's just a simple fact. The the what I what I gave you as an example is a testament to that truth. Um, but you know, we have to cater the 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 process of showing development in a transparent manner that is capable of transcending certain audiences or at least being mindful of the different audiences that are going to be watching right and you guys are an example of of an audience that are that are capable willing wanting 
to kind of get into the nitty gritty during the discussion phase. But there is a much larger portion of our audience that really just wants to either see or play. Um, and and that's why we have to be careful how we do it. Yeah, I, I would do when. <laughs> <laughs> Annie? <laughs> that's the question you see it a million times like steven's not going to drop an alpha like, two is in our stream two. oh no that wasn't me actually al asking i was quoting those people <laughs> he was talking about <laughs> yeah oh, the ones that like yeah well that's i think you mentioned too that there's a lot of people that they're like you know the game looks so ready let's, let's launch it let's go and like that's like we're looking back and we're kind of seeing where, <laughs> where things seem like they're developed and we're kind of like uh i don't i don't know like i thought we were closer but then you like we're looking at some stuff and it's like because I, th I think we were kind of looking back like last year and we're like, oh, it's going to be right around the corner. And then yeah. I, I don't remember which stream we saw, but we're like, oh, it's it's going to be a bit longer than everyone kind of predicted. Yeah, I mean, you know, the truth of the matter is, and we've said this a long time and everybody's aware of this, like what we're building is not a, uh, you know, wham, bam, thank you, man. We're moving to the next game. You know what I mean? We're trying to create something that has longevity. And uh, when we're talking about what it takes to do that right, it means that rushing it is the bane of every game possible. Yes. And and it's not that we don't want to play, and it's not that we don't want to receive what our reward should be, which is the excitement, passion, happiness of the players we're making the game for. Like, yes, we feed and live off of our monthly presentations <laughs> to the community because it shows us how well our direction resonates with their target audience, right? Our fellow gamers. Um, but the reality is, is that uh, we have seen time and time again, as lovers of this genre ourselves, playing games that cut corners or playing games that were built not to last a long time, um, whether through whatever monetization strategies or design choices get made. Um, <clears throat> and the reality is, is that we're trying to do something different. And when we're trying to do that thing differently, um, there is a particular focus that we need to maintain, and that is spending the time necessary to build it in a way uh, that is not going to result in the same experience we've all had in the past. Um, and it's painful. It's difficult. <laughs> It's a lot of frickin' time um, and effort, but I think that it's worth the reward. What is the what is the old saying? Is that uh, patience is uh, is bitter, but its fruit is sweet, and uh, you know that's something that we always got to keep our our eye on. Yeah, I d I don't know if I could do this with another game. I just uh because I remember even when we first we found it, <laughs> Annie had subscribed to the newsletters and everything when it was on Kickstarter. And I'm definitely kicking myself that we didn't back it then. But I I was so used to like I know how long games take to develop. I don't want to see it. Don't show me. And then I forget what uh, happened. It was, but it, it was love at first sight for me. Yeah, I was Annie like, was like yeah. always trying to show me. I'm like I know we're not going to see this for at least like ten. Like why are you showing me this? And then something happened where I was like, ah shit. I was like, I'm, I'm in now. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so like ever since then, it's like I've been glued to like anytime an article comes out, a video comes out and all these things where it's like, man, I just want to absorb. Like I, I've really enjoyed the process. And I think there's something too where for, for some of us, when, when we are following this, and I think it could also be why sometimes that reaction, whether it's an emotional reaction with, with something that either someone misunderstood or maybe a design did change. But I think because having it starting following so early i think you get like this bit of i wouldn't say ownership but it's a word i'm going to use where you do Investment. like get this bit of yeah like you feel very connected to this this thing and that's one of the things that i love about it because it, it feels it's i don't know if it, it's like uh when you find a band that like no one knows about and then everyone learns about it you're like i don't like that band anymore but like it, it's just <laughs> you find it at the very beginning it just it's 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 amazing to follow but i don't think i could do this with another one and and props to you guys for having like i can only imagine the additional level of stress that comes with doing these and showing it and having it in the public oh, eye yeah. on it especially it like very, when you guys lifted the the nda during um alpha one and stuff <laughs> where it was like you know that that could have gone one of either ways and just being like no we want people to see this we want people to be able to talk about it so i i commend you guys a lot for just putting yourself out there to be able to take that criticism and stuff. Cause that's, it's something that even like these, you know, triple a studios, they're not doing, they're not putting themselves out there to get either yeah, a bunch you know, of love or hate out of it. 
Yeah, you know, it's it, I've talked about this in the past, but the reality is is that I feel the paradigm is, is shifting a bit when it comes to game development. I hope it continues uh, in that sense, um, because you know, while while watching development isn't for everybody, there is a large and healthy section of the gaming population that is willing and able to be part of a development. Uh, and to give their thoughts and experiences. And I think that's just an absolute treasure trove of navigational direction that's available to game developers overall. Um, it, it requires a significant investment, right? You have to be willing to spend the time um, to curate kind of the, the level of transparency that is appropriate, um, but transparency being the key. Um, and, you know, it definitely adds a layer of complexity to an already complex process, which is making games in the first place. And, you know, making games is difficult. Making an MMO is probably the most difficult game you can make. And ours is a particularly ambitious one. So like there is just layer upon layer of difficulty and stress and, you know, moments of doubt and, you know, inflection. Like there's, there's a lot of stuff um, that, that comes out through this process and it's years long, but um, ultimately, you know, it is important to keep your eye on the prize and that prize is being able to create something that you and your fellow gamers can look at and say, this is fucking good. You know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good that's, <laughs> well, that's the thing too. And you, you had touched uh, just a little while ago about making a game that has longevity. And I think that's, I think even some developers for certain games, uh, I remember watching a, a, a dev stream about WoW, how they were saying, we never intended the game to be played eight hours a day, multiple times a week. Like it was never our intent to have that. And it seems like you guys are taking in consideration like that player that wants to, it kind of going back to like, um, harkens back to some of the older MMOs where it was almost like a second life. And I, that's something that Annie and I have both been missing because we want, we tend to be, a, like a one game player. Like I haven't had a home in, in gaming for a very long time because I want to have one game I go to. I, I think MMO players are a bit different than other genres because we want to have that thing. This is where we log in. This is where our friends are. This is where we, yeah. you know, we're excited to continue this progression and everything. And for me personally, yeah. I haven't had that game spark that because I'll, I'll you know, like I said, I, when Ash is coming out, I'll probably DGen it as much as I can when it first comes out. And like, I do that with every game. Cause I just want to sit there and soak, suck everything up out of it. And then I'm like, well, now I'm at the end game and now I'm just waiting every week to get a piece of loot where the yeah. login reward. Yeah. <laughs> you know, MMOs are, are a unique genre, right? They are the most socially elastic genre out there. Um, and, you know, it makes sense. It is a massively multiplayer genre, right? Um, so the unique opportunity that arises in forming friendships and, and bonds with people whom you've never met before and it live on halfway across the world from you in a culture that's radically different from yours with a background that's uniquely diverse, like, you know, that is just not typically an opportunity seen elsewhere in life, let alone games. Um, so it has a tendency to create very passionate friendships and relationships with people because you're spending those hours with them on a Discord or on a TeamSpeak or whatever, right? Um, and, and in that sense, you know, there is a special responsibility that comes from the development teams that create these environments. Um, because you're not just now offering entertainment for people, you're offering a home for people, a social home that they, that, you know, is an important component of being a human being. Um, so you want to make sure that you're treating that home with respect and with integrity when building it, uh, and you're dedicating the time and, um, you know, resources that comes along with making that home. And so, you know, taking our time with this development is something that's important um, and I think is ultimately what players will want, even if their patient says otherwise during that process. Yeah, I feel like once you guys finally do get to a point where it releases or even even in the betas, that's where you're going to see a lot of that turnaround where I, I feel like there's so many con um, people that 
or, or, or said it was going to fail in the beginning. So they're just holding on to that too. Where they're like, I can't, I can't be wrong. I said this was a scam. I said it wasn't can't going be wrong. Well. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, because games that are scam definitely make deca- decals in the grass when you stomp on it. But that's a different tangent. But <laughs> just that was the thing too. It, because I, I will see arguments of people talking about some of the detail. Why are they focusing on that? Why are they focusing on that? And it's like, do you know any other game that focuses on those small details? Like, it's a wow. just seeing the labor of not not saying that they yeah. don't, but seeing the amount of yeah. labor of love that you. And I'm I'm not trying to throw any other developer sure. saying they don't yeah, do yeah, that, no, but I'm yeah. saying the like some of these small small details that we see in in the in some of the design in like um. Just like trying to get the physics right on the on the trees falling or trying to get a very specific animation out of this, like mm-hmm. see, trying to have these very specific things that you guys are going for. Like, I feel that when I watch it where I'm like, man, that's that's amazing that you guys thought about that small yeah. detail, which seems to kind of get glossed over a bit on some of these other things. I'm not trying to say yeah, other think... developers don't love their projects. It's more of like, oh, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I think that, um, you know, I think that that's a, a great observation as it relates to what I was just talking about in creating that home, right? It's those minute details that can have a large impact um, for the immersion quality of the home or world you're in, right? And I think what, you know, when people say, why are they focusing on this? Um, Oftentimes, those types of details are not really a focus. They're the icing on top of a core feature that a developer has the love to introduce, <laughs> right? It might not even be a part of the game design document, but like, hey, I spent some extra time this evening or over the course of this last week's evenings making this idea. What do you think about it, Stephen? And I'm just like, holy shit, let me let you cook. You know, just go. Do, <laughs> you I know, love that. You, you do, do what you do what you think's best because obviously you have the passion for it, right? Like that's why one of the biggest qualifiers for the people that we hire at Intrepid, and probably one of the components of why you know I'm a very selective individual when it comes to introducing new members to the team. Um, you know, is, are you an MMO gamer? Have you played MMOs before? Yes, you can model a creature, you know, yes, you can code a feature, um, but do you know what it's like to be the player on the other side of the screen who's going to play the thing you're doing? And do you know what it means to play it, right? Have you experienced that sense of community? Do you know what an MMO genre is truly? Um, And, Yeah, it's hard to find those individuals to a degree because MMOs aren't as big of a genre as they used to be. I believe that the golden years have yet to come, um, but, you know, historically there's been a little bit of a lull. Um, And so, you know, it is what helps find that magic that you just described, right, Is, is people who love and appreciate the genre. That's so right. important too. <laughs> I say, and I think it really shines through on a, a lot of the work that you guys do because, like, we'll we'll be sitting there watching and, and you're like, man, that is just little things will pop out where it's like, I can't believe they thought about that or like, and I, I love seeing that because it it just for me it showcases like how much of labor of love this this project is and how much of a passion project it is, and like it it literally almost comes off as like this love letter to the MMO genre of like. This is, these are all the things that we all wished and wanted for in like it, a lot of them either fell short or, or wasn't there at the time. And like, just seeing this, it's one of the reasons I just get so pumped for this project and like why we've, you know, I decided to make content for it and things like that. Yeah. yeah we don't do absolutely. this for just anybody. <laughs> <laughs> well, Hey guys, I, I have an eight o'clock that's about to start in 20 minutes and I need to prep for it. But I, I just wanted to come on and say, uh, I like watching you guys chat about things. I think you guys are an eclectic group and you have so much experience in the MMO genre itself. Um, I love the fact that you cover ashes and that you guys give your thoughts because it's a great touch point when it comes to understanding the motivation of players who are different than me, who are different than you know people at the studio but are also the same in so many respects um so thanks for having me on I, i'm glad i was able to chat with you guys a little bit and i look forward to future shows awesome hey Steve, yeah, one thanks thing. so much for coming Steve, on one yeah. thing. can you give yes, Corey permission what? to come on our show Corey? oh <laughs> yeah. my goodness 
<laughs> Maybe in the future. Let me chat with Corey about that. <laughs> oh, man. If the I can't control question, myself Steven. spilling, how can I control Corey spilling? I, I, I'll, be, I'll be gentle. I won't ask any questions. That... <laughs> I love it. All right, guys. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Thanks for being on, Steven. Hi, Steven. Hi, Thank you. Thanks, Steven. Bye. It's good. Oh, my. Yeah, I um <laughs> that was something different. Uh I Wow, guys. <laughs> There's 73 of you right. watching. Thanks you for coming and hanging out while uh Steven hijacked our stream. That was amazing. <laughs> um which was nice because we still got to touch on a lot of things. Man, I fangirled so hard when he first I <laughs> I lot I'm glad that's on camera so you can all see how much of a fucking fangirl I am. Oh my god. <laughs> sure so I, I I probably blushed <laughs> a, a bunch bit. of times. I'm I'm sitting Slush. over here like trying to fucking produce a show and I'm like, I can't think. Someone else take care. I need an adult. <laughs> oh my god. And oh my god, there's so many, so many chats we didn't get to. Thank you guys for all the people that subbed and um followed and everything. I'm sorry that we we didn't really get to uh interact with you I, there's so much going on that i i could not pay attention to that um we yeah, might so, go back through later possibly and read the chat and pick out Senpai any questions me. and maybe oh answer it separately <laughs> oh jesus i know i'm gonna have to go back and go and read yeah the impromptu format was amazing i think one of the things too uh thank you for following um i think one of the things too that our show does is that we go on tangents we're used to pivoting when we need to so that was amazing just <laughs> having improv. steven come in which <laughs> was actually really cool because it was still on par with the show notes i had so we did transition um from our freeholds conversation to the uh to the new bag resources and having a lot of context and stuff on that was great guys i will be right back i've had to take a piss for like the last like 40 minutes <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness She's yeah i definitely think girling. yeah seriously um yeah the clarification on the bag space was really good um oh my gosh, that was so helpful yes i appreciate that so much steven so that was great was and saying, then also the clarification think... with max level 50 and freeholds yeah it really reinforces those thoughts that you know that like intrepid is looking at these things and they're like okay from a player's perspective why is this good or why is it bad and you know that they're going through those thoughts and it's it, it feels so good from a, a supporter from a longtime fan to know that they're thinking about those things and that's awesome yeah there's like i think there's so much in it that we're not realizing because we're not in the project with how much deep thought is going behind it okay i'm back you know what's fucking hilarious <laughs> because of uh me getting banned from narc's chat i can't even jump in and tell him that steven was on the show <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I, I thought about doing that but i i was distracted <laughs> i don't know if he's, he's on now streaming right now right was he oh my god that's so fucking i don't funny. know if he is or isn't oh you guys told him thank you um that's so fucking funny <laughs> we told him <laughs> <laughs> oh my god I do yeah think he so dropped a little info there because i don't i don't know if they've mentioned in the past before but this is definitely new to me but the fact that like there's a loot time for like yeah no that was inventory that seems kind of new to me and i, I and i think that's kind of interesting i don't know if he so much meant loot time as what he was talking about that there is now a amount of time that is actually going to take you to loot the item to put it into the bag yeah. so like now that you're gonna have to figure out oh shit i gotta throw this out or i don't have the bag for this i think one of the things too because they've mentioned that we're gonna be able to have backpacks and things like that i wonder if those are also going to be visually represented so if you do have a lot of mining bags or something, you know, you obviously have the miners tools or whatever. So I almost wonder if like PVP wise, there's like a visual indicator of like, oh, that guy's mining or whatever. So then, you know, like it's not even worth going to, uh, to, to go and try to do that. Sorry. I'm reading the chat now, guys. I'm going to get all distracted. <laughs> this guy, he's got too many mining bags. <laughs> yeah, this guy's got too many mining bags. I'm a lumberjack. I don't have any time for that shit. <laughs> <laughs> um i i am so pumped to edit this podcast because i didn't hear half the things steven said because <laughs> i was just like what you got is stars it? in your I eyes was so surreal <laughs> holy shit <laughs> oh man 
That's, what was I'm that a... you always said though that if we ever got steven on our channel like we've made it and we can just quit now yeah no guys i'm quitting <laughs> twitch now i guess uh, we're I quitting hit, no. <laughs> i had steven on my show i got to where we wanted to be uh thanks for joining the last episode of tangents of creation uh if it was your first <laughs> our our one year anniversary one and only oh, year yeah, it was <laughs> almost yeah we almost <laughs> man that was so that was so fucking cool yeah it was almost a good run good. you know we, we had margaret on before and now we had steven like i mean I need to have Corey on, though. I feel like, <laughs> oh, Stephen, please let Corey yeah. come on the show. It's like the Infinity Gauntlet. We need, we need. I know. I need to collect all the rings. We also need Alex. We need Alex too from the the main combat team. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Alex would be cool to have on. Dude, honestly, um, Stephen, if you do watch this, uh, the recap of it too, um, I would love to do a series where we just get to interview each dev. So if you need someone to do that later on. Hit me up. Oh my god, I can't believe Steven jumped in my he DMs said, and also he said he loves watching our show. I know he's watched it more than once. I'm not sure how I feel about oh, that. No. We've said some pretty dirty <laughs> things. <laughs> yeah, if you guys are new to this, uh new to the show, um, and you heard me use the word DGen, you're gonna enjoy, especially towards uh the end of the show, because that's normally when things see no one gets there on YouTube because they probably start like, oh, this is kind of boring. If you were to skip like 45 minutes in, that's when all the dick jokes start. Um <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> Just trying to find more of our people. Uh also if you guys haven't joined, there's a link to the Discord if anyone wants to join us and have fun and all that good shit. Talk ashes, talk anything, Talk ashes, Diablo. yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. We also yeah, do our community nights and everything. Um let me see. Where are we with I am so lost. I feel with... like we don't even need to like <laughs> I don't even know. Are we just gonna recap by talking about what's <laughs> Let's go back over it, Steven. Ed. Um, I did like, I really liked, um, because I already really liked the idea of the, the spatial bags. Um, we, I know we didn't get into debating how people felt about it, but I, I already kind of liked the idea. I, I hate tre- Tetris, I suck at it, but having an auto sort is pretty cool. But going in depth <laughs> of like why this choice is being made over others, and then also the same thing with like learning about level cap with freeholds, it's like you probably won't get it anyway by the time you hit 50 because of some of these other systems going to come online so i think that was kind of good insight to have and it is kind of interesting too because of the way ashes is going to be structured where your first introduction to ashes like ours if we when you first launch or, or for sorry if you join at launch where there's nothing in the world at all your 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 experience is going to be so much different than when someone who joins in like months down the road yeah he clarified um a bunch of stuff uh steven actually clarified quite a bit um so this podcast will be back up on youtube it'll be on all the other podcast places i'll probably cut certain parts so that way you guys can see um when the uh prompt to <laughs> impromptu steven interview started <laughs> oh that was so God. unexpected it was i i need god i know narc has it on his discord he's got like a list of like things to ask steven if they ever have an interview we need to do that in case this ever happens again. So I'm like, Steven, hold on. <laughs> the only question I had was, can I, mean, I, just come randomly, out to play? I just randomly was like, Hey, you should, you should come on our show sometime. And he's like, I'm free now. And I was like, Oh yeah, fuck. dude, that's literally how the Margaret one happened. We were, so the way that Margaret came on the stream was, we were just talking in the, the, um, during one of the dev streams. And then we were joking around about something. And then and he's like, Hey, you should come on our podcast. She's like, okay. So guys, if you have a podcast, <laughs> apparently you've just just ask and it happens. And sometimes it happens way faster than you intend it to. Also, Margaret, if you watch the end of this, I am so sorry if Steven spoiled anything. I'm not, but like <laughs> I understand your job's difficult. <laughs> <laughs> we love um, you, Margaret. You do I, good work. Uh, you do good work. <laughs> Margaret's fucking awesome. <laughs> She's great. Yes, I love her. It was so fun. Um, accidentally keeping her captive for the three hours that we interviewed her. <laughs> Oh my god, I felt bad about that afterwards. I was like, oh, I didn't realize we should have probably established a time limit. I know, it, she thought it was only going to be an hour. It's like, these guys held me two hours longer than I expected to be here. I would have held Steven <laughs> as talk. long as possible, too. I, I just needed like questions to start formulating in my head. There was a couple good ones in chat. Um, I think Vertec asked something about being able to ban players from your tavern, like if they're troublesome or, you know, whatever the reason. I... I would have loved to hear the answer to that one. Oh, if you can kick him out, that'd be kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so sorry, guys. We, I didn't have any chance to be able to. Uh, you can't ban them. Just hire, they, hire a couple bouncers, you know? <laughs> when can we interview Narc? So <laughs> I tried asking Narc if he wanted to come on the show, but he says he doesn't want to be responsible for his behavior in other shows, which also, if you guys know our show, 
uh, we don't give a shit. So just petition to him. <laughs> keep, keep telling him that you want him on our show, that you guys want to see a, you know, um, what is it called? What the, when people do the crossover thing? What? <laughs> when you, what the fuck's it called? No, it starts with a C. I can't remember the word. The collaboration. There we go. Not oh, crossover. Yeah, oh. yeah that's a good one. <laughs> Desh here is not here. <laughs> uh, all right. I don't want to, like, I just kind of want to bask in this right now with everybody. Um, that this just <laughs> happened because this was pretty fucking crazy. Um, Feels good. I, I still, like, I can't. I, was, I wasn't ready for this, guys. <laughs> I, I'm still, like... <laughs> I'm going to be watching it and be like, God, look at you smiling like a fucking moron the entire time. Uh, That's so funny. It was so good. That could um, definitely be a concern. You know, open voice chat inside a tavern and you just get spammed with all sorts I, of I'm undesirable. That, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure things. you're going to be able to mute voice. I, I know in other games you're able to do that anyway. I kind of... Yeah, I, I'm certain members yeah i'm kind of concerned though with the voice over ip thing too um mainly from because we played red dead redemption uh two online and we we came across some shitty people uh, especially ones that were using cheats and it's like man we're playing with our our nine-year-old daughter on top which, of that too so <laughs> that's maybe a bad parenting move um <laughs> we play games with the kids so um yeah it should be able to be muted so th there's that but yeah like we what did we make the joke of the other time where you're gonna be walking through and you just hear some ERPers and some macaroni noises and it's like what's going on? Oh my god! I didn't know they put macaroni in this game. And you're like, what's you going got on the inside, people, guys? the people who run and the ones that go eavesdrop. <laughs> Man, they sure like to pray a lot. <laughs> oh my god! Are we the divine note? <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> and the tangents have begun. Nice. Yep. Uh, god. Lord's over here, like, oh god, save me. <laughs> yeah, he's like, <laughs> uh, Lord, thoughts on Steven coming and joining the show? I don't know, man. I'm still awestruck. He, uh, he just sat there and looked pretty. <laughs> I, so I do find it amazing. Our first time doing a round table, like, we've been holding off for such a long time having guests on the show, aside from Margaret, like, holding off for such a long time. We go to do this today. Just that one. This was prompt like impromptu, like asking you guys if you wanted to come on today and do this. I mean, it was yesterday, whatever. And then, yeah, okay, we have guests on. By the way, Steven's also joining. Like, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> I'm so glad that today is the it day. It escalated that from a uh, ten to a to a ninety real fast. <laughs> oh, I know. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> um. Okay. So now let's. I, I can address the chat now. Um. So just give me a second, guys. Uh, they still haven't, so unknown system error saying they still haven't clarified, but since they plan, uh, since the plan is for PvP to occur on the freehold, probably not. Can't lock people from being able to gank you while your three men use screens into the tower. Yeah, so I'm curious of like what's considered the home because, like, obviously, I I, I think thematically it'd be really cool to see a tavern brawl. I, I thought... think that's kind of neat. Because I think it's just the home. Well, the house. It's the house. Yeah, it's like the only the house. Structure. Yeah, it's I only kinda, the house. I mean, it's kind of like the real life, real life, right? Like someone right now could be over on my yard. Don't, don't be on my yard. Somebody could be on your yard, <laughs> and it's like, yeah, you go lock yourself in. But you no, know, you can lock. Yeah, you can lock the doors on the homestead. So yeah, it's, it, it'll be interesting. And then it's like, can you telegraph your buddies? Like, hey, there's dicks over here trying to fuck up my shit. You can get over here and help. You just hire professional bouncers. Um, ah, oh, that'd be fun. <laughs> Vertec, I remember it was forever ago. Was it you guys that were talking about having like, I, I, I think it was you guys. It was so long ago uh, about there being, because I'm thinking Golden Feather, Feather Tavern. Was it you guys that were saying that you want like a tavern that's like neutral ground where like this is just where everyone kind of goes to hang out and like, or was that someone else? Am I, am I, am I off on thinking that? Because I thought there was going to be like this tavern where it's like, this is the hangout spot. Yeah. Okay. So it was you guys. Okay. Yeah. So that, I mean, so I guess that would kind of like make it more difficult if you guys can't ban the, the things, but I guess having to have people enforce like, Hey, knock it off. Um, we'll have to, we'll have to start an in-game fund for the, the gold feather tavern to have a tavern. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't worry. Just hire, hire, you know, chaos and lace cartel. We'll keep you protected. There you go. 
I might go pick some flowers or something, but you guys got it. <laughs> yeah. You know what? Last time that you tried to pick flowers while we were doing PvP, it didn't end very well. I got ganked. I was like, what the hell? Like, you guys are off killing people, and I was doing my own thing and got attacked. It was good. I mean, <laughs> I we ended up killing that guy like twice. So, yes. Yeah. Yeah. We got yeah the, I we mean, got after he end. killed you, we just. Oh, <laughs> uh, dude, I cannot wait to um, dive into Ash's PvP. Like, I don't know. I, I love the idea of doing the bounty hunting. Like, uh, some so many people are afraid of, like, other people. Like, what people abuse the, the corrupted system? Go for it. I'm going to take their shit. <laughs> Like, I'm going to be trying to hunt them You're, down and take their thing. You are what people are afraid of. I know. <laughs> I know. PvP. Listen, any, <laughs> we were talking about Baldur's Gate 3 and how that's coming out. And she's like, I know you're going to play the Dark Urge and you're just going to do all the bad things. I'm like, I don't try to play a villain. It just happens. <laughs> um, you're I don't still going to try that class out, though. I know I you. Hate, listen, I hate having to have everything go. Like, I don't want to try to cleanse corruption. That's annoying. I might hit a few people and see if they hit back. And if they don't, I'm like, okay, I'll walk away. I'm just naturally evil. <laughs> I would like to say that it's like, it ranges from chaotic neutral. And then it's on a spectrum of how I feel that day. If it's either going to sway good or evil. <laughs> I would say Which I normally am pretty neutral. Woke up on? <laughs> yeah. It you depends see, on the, the yeah. real fear. Isn't the XP dead. The real fear is nuclear tango coming to kill you. Because <laughs> 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 I'm going to be about it. I know. I just I'm gonna have to. Or pen him with his his predator. Oh yeah, <laughs> pen him be a predator. Yeah, the predator class. <laughs> right. So, yeah, That's Steven what I wanted to that. ask Stephen. Stephen, are we gonna change this name? Can please? we change the name? There's some flexibility here. Yeah. Can we not have it called predator. Yeah, guys, we're all playing a predator in Ash's creation. Whoa, buddy, pump the brakes there. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I I love that. I got a little little chuckle out, Lord. Lord, I love when you're on stream with us. Yeah, me too. <laughs> we haven't done much no, since it's uh good. it's it's been a while since um Dead by Daylight and everything. We gotta start doing that again. We do. Oh, I agree. It's been a year. Yeah, almost. Eleven months. Oh god. <laughs> oh yeah. man. I can't believe it's been that wait, so I think I've been streaming for a year now. It's I yeah. think I started Yeah. Around... You started Damn. early July. Guys, I hit my stream year. goals. Oh like I might not ever make partner, but I had I had Mar Margaret on, I had Steven on. In a year. It's, it's all down here. Good. Now. I mean, like <laughs> that's what we said, celebrating our year anniversary, and we're yeah, done. Yeah, yeah, guys, I'm done. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know what to Hey, next you get Mr. Trost. That's true. Oh, my God, that would be cool. What I need is an actual not impromptu interview where I can actually, you know, gather questions <laughs> from something. Twitter. <laughs> I yes. guess now it's on to, like, trying to get Asmin on stream or something. I what, what I loved, <laughs> What I loved was... I think Steven just really wanted to clarify some things and used our platform for him to do it, which is great. Thank you, Steven. Thank you for hijacking yeah, this stream. That's amazing. That, that was like so he, great. <laughs> like he hopped on and he's like, I could put this all on Twitter or Yeah, or I, I could, could just say it. I could just say it and <laughs> then I'm gonna have it. them oh, upload yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> They'll like the views. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. That was that was fucking amazing. Um I'm not going to sleep tonight. I'm probably just going to rewatch the podcast and be like, what did I miss? Oh my God. Wired, wired yeah. Oh time. dude. I already feel, I just, I woke the fuck up. I was like, damn. Oh man. Remember what I was saying good. earlier that I was starting the podcast tired. I'm not tired anymore. Yeah, I know. I'm like super amped. All right, guys. I'm trying to, I don't know what me to and do Lord's now. First, I was going to say me and Lord's first ashes stream and man, we got Steven on. Yeah, yeah, damn, you guys are fucking amazing. Look at you guys go. I know. One Good job, one. guys. <laughs> Dude, G Gen shit. Oh, man. Do you guys want to watch the up. Bear Sex in BG3? I'm kidding. I don't want to get the monitor. We can hold on. <laughs> I win there. I'm just saying, you don't have to fuck the bear, okay? Hey, I feel like there's a lot a of. Full role playing experience. That's know? the thing. I think, a lot, I think a lot of people are afraid that they're the going to want to fuck is the bear. There. For funny perverts like me. <laughs> I just think it's hilarious. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah. I, yeah, it was really cool. Um, because I think Corey's said a few times, too, that, like, he's like, we love you guys. And I'm like, who's we? Because I know you are you're, you would just say <laughs> yeah, I. Who's... So I'm like, who's watching? How far do you guys get in? Do I need to change our brand? <laughs> no, I, <don't... laughs> uh, I got to cut Have off I all the... Have I offended anyone at the office? I know. I got <laughs> yeah. to edit out all the bear sex comments. <laughs> Like, that can't be in the whole <laughs> no, podcast. No, don't do that. That is just uh, not okay. Yeah, that's not okay. Yeah, Steven's like, God, I shouldn't, I shouldn't have gone on. Hats off to you. 
What is hats hey. off to you? Wait, what is that? I don't know where is that, that came on from. my thing. What am I supposed to do? Hold on. I mean, I'm off. wearing a beanie. Is that... I could take it off. I, I know the hydrate, but is it? I'm supposed to put a hat on? Is that what? I added new things to the channel. I have no idea what that is. Let's, let me get started. Oh God, hopefully not. The only hat I have near me is no. Like it a just big says hats off to you. Hat. I'm gonna hold on. Um, oh, something that's kind of cool that's coming down the pipeline. This has really nothing uh, to do with anything. Um, well, it does, but um, it's a the future of the shit. Uh, pick anybody. Redeem time somebody else out. Um, <laughs> if you don't have a hat on, you have to shave your head. Hell no. <laughs> oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. It's pants off. <laughs> Brave of you guys to assume that I'm wearing pants. Um, actually, I kind of want to say that when Steven <laughs> said, um, hold on, let me catch up on this. I need a drink. <laughs> when Steven My said that, um, gone. said something about playing board games with friends, I'm like, <laughs> I don't have friends. <laughs> Steven hey. can be your friend. I know, Steven True. be my friend. Um, I had let's, a hat somewhere, but I can't find it, so hold on. Let's just all move to, to LA. Are we Is really doing this? Are we getting are we San getting hats Diego. right now? Oh my god, I can't oh, see yeah, shit San right Diego now. Diego. Okay. I think this will this will be a bit better. <laughs> you, you have a hat. Lord, I'm gonna have to put like a, there we go. a funny <laughs> gift put on you. Um okay. So now I gotta pick somebody to uh I gotta ban someone. Or Somehow time someone this out. works. <laughs> I don't even know how to... Guys, you guys are doing so many things that I don't even know how to do in it now. Uh, I don't want to be a dick. Who are you timing okay. out? What is happening? Just time out me. It's okay. <laughs> I don't even know how to do this right now. All right. No, Jamie You're should wired. get banned because Jamie's the one who spelled Lord's name wrong. <laughs> Did I, I, no, I can't believe I spelled it wrong. I'm sorry, Lord. No one's going to be able to find you on it was, Twitter. It was Lord's moment of fame and you spelled his name wrong. <laughs> Dude, I have no idea how to do this. Can, do, don't I have a mod? Who's a mod? Lord, figure I'm this out. Mod. Can you can you time can you time someone out? Can you time someone out? <laughs> yeah. Do you I don't know job? how to use. Just... I don't. I don't know how to use Twitch. I just do Twitch. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me how you feel bad now. Listen, didn't you ask me to put this on? <laughs> well, I'm surprised. I don't even wear hats. Hat. I'm surprised I had a hat. <laughs> that was a singer, Lord. Yeah, I'm sorry. Well, why do you? Why do you think there's just a picture? You gotta change the voice and everything. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty. That's pretty uh, fantastic hair. Just gotta put that out there. Are we taking? Yeah, no. Are we taking hats off now? I took my hat off. Everyone said it was getting weird. <laughs> Face reveal at one K subs. <laughs> All right, Lord, start streaming. I actually don't know why these are just sitting on top of my office, my desk, but um, face reveal at one K sub. I'm wearing. Oh I'm wearing the face. I wore. I put on Lord's face. Okay. That does look like me. <laughs> <laughs> all right views are quickly falling off um thank you guys so much for coming being here that was awesome. um i think i i know what a hat is i just don't have one over here i have one hat and i always lose it i'm pretty sure it's in the bedroom <laughs> where is he going I'm gonna go get his hat to the hat land hey at least this time now when he abandons the stream i have people to talk to <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm back. Like, oh I just God, what do I, say? I don't even know why it was on the floor. Who wears a hat in the bedroom? <laughs> confirmed. Just a little tiny I top. I want to put this out there. Richie's right. We need to get out of the Riverlands. I'm tired. We of do. It. I agree. I saw that <laughs> pop up. I saw it for like a second. I saw a few things. I'm like, man, I just, I don't, I don't know how to, I don't know how to do this right now. <laughs> oh, that chat was blowing Richie, up. You guys are great. Still here. I just, I figured it better to just let you. Steven talk. <laughs> that was the thing, too. I'm like, please slip up. Say something big. Say something big. As I say, Lord, is a, Lord, you could just say that out loud. <laughs> oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, you know, you can speak. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's like, oh, yeah, I'm on stream. <laughs> you have Lord, a voice. Let say, it be heard. I'm going to say, Lord has the voice of an angel. All right, Lord, it's start singing. <laughs> Yeah. Awkward silence. Now, boy, you guys, <laughs> stop putting me on the spot. Uh, to the redwoods, yeah, very, very much so, Mio. I agree. 
Yeah, if we can move, just <laughs> slightly move out. Like we can, we don't have to go all the way. But just let us divert slightly to the redwoods instead of Riverlands. Yeah, you guys have to come out here. Oh, that's true. We do need to go to California. Depending on where, I mean. Yes. I know. When are we? I, I mean, I might be going next month, possibly. Cali. Depending when what? school starts. Um, I have I have Cali. I have family that lives out there. Um, my aunt and oh. her and my cousins, they like opened a, a restaurant or something. I need help setting it up, so I was gonna go help them if I can. Dude, I was supposed to have a facility manager meeting, uh, like event. It was gonna be in Tampa, and I was so pumped. And then last minute they changed it to Nashville, and I was like, "What the fuck? I don't want to go to Nashville." <laughs> okay guys we're getting way off the rails thank you so much for coming and hanging out um gotta bring it back to ashes you just got an ad did i <laughs> so nobody's no, gonna hear you <laughs> ad in progress oh my god i'm so sorry <laughs> it's i always end, wonder like gonna be nothing it depends on what what's wrong with nashville nothing it's just i've never been I, i'm just nothing it's just it's close by to us so yeah it's, it's not really like, close i was it's looking not like a vacation <laughs> if the option was going to tampa or nashville this one sounds yeah. awful compared to this one. Is all I'm saying. <laughs> one's Legends. a vacation. One's a work work trip. Yeah, I thought <laughs> you live there. Yeah. They live there. <laughs> oh shit. Um, I think it's about like three hours. Don't be telling three, people four. where we live. <laughs> we'll it could be in it any direction, in the direction <laughs> of Kentucky. <laughs> what about Boone, North Carolina? Um, I've never been. I don't. I haven't gone too too far south. Um. I've been to, you live there too. Oh my God. You're, are you all, wait, Sweets, are you saying that you're from Nashville also? <laughs> yeah, I'm not saying, okay, I'm not saying that Nashville won't be fun. Like, I'm going to have a great time. It's more like <laughs> Tampa would have been everybody. a lot of, yeah, I'm backpedaling. I'm just, oh, you're in Tampa. See, <laughs> Sweets and I could have had a lot of fun. We just <laughs> fuck it up in Tampa, man. Uh, just, Honestly, you know, I'm up. I'm full of shit. I would have just slept in my hotel room the entire time. That's like any time I actually go on a trip where I'm like just disassociated on my bed and I'm like, well, if you oh, go fuck, to, it's been like nine since hours. You're going I'm to Nashville, since you're going to Nashville, we can drive down there and then I can actually come too. That's Whereas true. Tampa, it would have been just, just been you. Yeah. That means I'll actually go out places and like I'll actually be able to get over my social anxiety. <laughs> Going back to me not having friends. Um it's funny because I think I'm I'm more introverted than you, but like I'm more adventurous when we <laughs> go out. Yeah, to do I hate things. fucking going I'm places. Pulling you out of the house to go things. <laughs> it's like I like um Yeah, Tampa's oh, full you. of fun things. <laughs> I bet it is full of fun things. Now I can't have fun stories to come back to tell Annie of all the degenerate things I did while I was gone. Because now I'm just gonna wear cowboy hats and cowboy hats and wear eat nashville spicy things hey now i'm not trying to I talk shit i'm sorry cowboy stories too <laughs> cowboy stories listen i understand the <laughs> got my boots on yeah i know dude i'm wearing vans right now <laughs> guys hold on no never mind oh no no no, no. i want to show you guys so i don't know if you guys can tell that my stream colors are can they just show up? No. It's not gonna... You guys see that my shoelaces are green and pink i fucking put those on today and it fucking looks sweet <laughs> I don't know why I shared that. Okay, none of this has to do with ashes anymore. Uh, we probably should probably wrap things up. Thank you guys so much for coming and hanging out. Leg we reveal. got oh, the yeah. biggest tangent we could have possibly gotten. <laughs> I know. I just I don't even know what guys. It's all downhill right now. Like I don't even know what to do after this. No, no, no. no Save no, the no. legs for one k subs, positive. dude. I've done so many times. Dude, I'm gonna like do write... it for like ten subs. <laughs> yeah, dude. I still have. Um. So at some point, I do need to do it. I have the world's spiciest sunflower seeds. We already completed that challenge, so I need to do that one. Um. You have just a couple other ones too. Um. You can only. <laughs> you can have those laces if you can deadlift five hundred plus. I can deadlift five hundred plus. So thank you. <laughs> That's chump change Done. for him. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, th I think. I'm trying to remember the last one that it was it was like 585 i think was the last last deadlift <sighs> the last deadlift <laughs> yeah which was a little while ago so oh man this Eat is a reaper surreal. it's fun we did on our stream a few weeks back we did the world's hottest gummy bear both of us did and that was whew. yeah i want to say Andy i've done something <laughs> yeah i've done uh um, my eyes were tearing so bad <laughs> i've done uh 16 million uh uh Scoville 
capsaicin crystals and stuff like i've, I've done the death nut challenge and stuff and th those are much hotter than the reaper um so <laughs> it, i i love i love doing spicy food challenges that's been a, a big thing that we've done um grow some reapers i think my i can't remember my dad's doing ghost peppers or whatever eat them raw oh dude that does seem pretty brutal um yeah because we just did the world's hottest gummy bear we've done the death nut challenges i'm saying we've as most of us be and he did the gummy bear and he did the gummy bear so that was fun to watch that's all up on the youtube <laughs> i um, normally do I don't to... eat the spicy stuff so um do i have to go buy one now say weave <laughs> yeah weave i dude yeah. i have so i have um <laughs> Do you want to do an awful challenge? I got the world's spiciest lollipop. I have two of them. We could always do that. <laughs> it's you like you have to finish the lollipop. No, 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 no. I think the challenge is you really. I think the is to see who can hold it in their mouth the longest. Um, the gummy bear is gonna send you to the ER. It was bad. It was that thing was freaking brutal. What was worse than that was the one chip challenge. The one chip challenge was I uh, was I think because of there was so much powder on the fucking chip that like i thought i was going to choke oh so yeah so punch the gut um i've learned the same thing that when it comes to spicy food challenges there's a bit of an art to prepping the stomach which uh guys jump in the discord <laughs> he, ask this, me how I do it. he didn't do it i still don't do it <laughs> dude i don't know how many spicy food challenges i've done on an empty, empty stomach i'm like you fucking moron you know every time <laughs> There were so many clips of, of, of Jamie just sitting there going, oh, yeah, dude, God. as soon as the milk hit the top of my gut, like all the pain subsided. I was like, just thinking, I'm like, you really again? I did it again. I, I don't know why I keep forgetting to eat and shit. All right, guys, we're getting way off the rails yeah, for, for any of you people who want to watch us do the gummy bear. We have it on our YouTube. Yeah, it's up on YouTube. I keep trying all to right, end this do you have the link. I It's somewhere. Just go join your YouTube. Hold on. <laughs> Oh my god! Just look up chaos and lace. Link, link to the YouTube. I had yeah. a whole conversation that I was starting, and I completely forgot what we were talking about. Welcome to the show. That's why it's called Tangent. Um, here's a link to the YouTube. Uh, what I was gonna say was that um, there Twitch is changing some things around where we're gonna be able to host the show simultaneously on any stream and my stream. So you guys will kind of have your options of who you want to. Did you say not found. Why did the, oh my God, YouTube. Oh, don't, you don't have my thing set up yet. So what? True. 404 not found. <laughs> Whoa, why is that not? Is that should DLX? be working. What the fuck? Oh, 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 I know what it is. Sorry. I apologize. <laughs> it needs the at. I'm like, dude, what happened to our channel? There you guys go. I don't. Oh, I don't have YouTube set up. We, we got on. a copyright strike. So. No, we didn't. Oh my god, I saw so many people talking about that too. I've tried to stay out of it. Um, I, I, I don't know, man. Oh God, I, I purposely kind of tried to like not feed into that. I know it probably would get views the more if we talk about it. I don't. I didn't even want to give a platform to it. Come on, drama it up. I mean, I would say that that was a childish thing for the person who did it to do. Yeah, it's just, I don't know. I think, I've, especially we watch Asmund's video on, on reacting to it, and I think it kind of summed up how I felt. It's like, man, you, you should be wearing that copy strike, if not wearing it, like, um, having, like, the channel taken down or something. I don't know. It's just, it's so, I don't know. My, Neo coming in clutch. <laughs> But yeah, Zerga, I just, I don't want to dive into it because I don't want to get the hands dirty. Not on that. I'll get my hands dirty. You know what? I'll, I'll do it again. Um, Lucky Ghost sucks. Okay. <laughs> you and all your fans. Oh Fuck God. you, Lucky Ghost. It's always I hope you're Lucky looking. Ghost. I hope Lucky Ghost watches this because Steven was on. I have to take all of this out. But if you're a Guild Wars 2 player, if you're a WoW player, if you're a Final Fantasy player, and you like Shadow Legends over Ashes, don't go in my fucking game. There, I said it. All right. I just need to put that call out there because I don't think you ever saw the meme I made of him. Steven, I'm sorry okay. that this is... A, I need to, We need to stop this immediately so Steven doesn't come back and be like, wow, I really wish I didn't jump on their VOD. They were just like, talking oh, shit about we picked everybody. The wrong right people. No. That's the only content creator that oh. annoyed the fuck out of me. Was him whining about the I fucking I feel like PvP. he knew what he was getting into, though, because he said he watches our show. That's so. true. So, Steven, unless you just lied. I hope you didn't. 
<laughs> show ended 15 minutes <laughs> yeah show hasn't been ending for I, it's it's kind of how it goes we always talk about it's like, like the lord of the rings where like it's you know, like kind yeah of the ending of black the rings. Back. <laughs> that's this show you know, when's the real like, ending yeah li- oh reset yeah he comes back like oh <laughs> shit i guess i can't run to go take a leak yet uh, all right guys i do i think we will end it though um kind of running over a little bit but thank you guys so much um trying to think we're going to be jumping in so for other content that we're going to have if you guys are into i mean neo <laughs> wants us to go for three hours we used to like the original i don't know it's up to annie <laughs> if you guys just want to hang out right now i might change i mean i'm wired just i'm wide awake so all right i'm gonna just change this to because i feel like this is now just going to be a just chatting stream so okay I just want to <laughs> waiting yeah. for y'all I, to send nodes. <laughs> I have to pull a Jamie and go to the restroom. So yeah, go ahead. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll change it to just chatting. So that way we can just, cause I'm sure things are going to drift. Um, but if you guys are interested in seeing some of the other content we're going to be doing, um, I know we're going to be doing Diablo four and do you playing through the seasons on that? Uh, when Baldur's Gate three drops, any are going to be playing that. Diablo has kind of been our community night thing, but it'd be fun to get back on uh, playing Dead by Daylight. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah. Um, also, the centaur dance. My favorite I know. part of it was when I would get scared when I was the killer. <laughs> Dude, so many times. You were a good huntress, though. Dude, I yes. know. We're gonna, yeah, I know. We got to find a way to get Daryl back so that way he can complain. But then he all he does is plays. When he play the doctor? In this nice. console, yeah. <laughs> and he's too good at it. By the way, I'm just gonna play the doctor every fucking time. <laughs> I tried. I got a couple of the other killers, and like I haven't. I just haven't had the same skill with them. I really like the huntress. Oh, I know. Hence my cosplay too. That I, I did. know that was a really cool cosplay. <laughs> oh my god. Also, I... centaur dance. Yes, Jamie and I, I were know. just talking about that. We we have it on our list. <laughs> I know we have to. We do have, so it, it was the centaur and them doing the dance dance revolution thing and just trying to figure out the logistics of that. Cause I thought it would be a lot easier to do. Um, what is Mio staring for me? Let me see. But, <laughs> it's a Russian what lullaby. That? What is this? What am I Hello? looking at? This ancient Russian lullaby is a teaching for little children not to sleep on the edge of the bed or a hungry gray wolf will bite them painfully. <laughs> I don't know if that will lead a copyright strike, but I will look at that later. <laughs> why? Why did you? Send, uh, why are we sending that? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Um, but yeah, I, we gotta figure out how to do. I wanted. So what I was thinking about with the centaur thing was that Annie can just like we'll film ourselves majestically like running in the outfits that I got in the backyard and just show you guys the clips. I don't really know what to do. <laughs> Do like oh, deadlight! Oh, oh, is that the? St- oh, I got gotcha. oh, you. Sense. Oh, maybe we'll have to like. What do we think about Pax Day? Um, I really like Mankini armor. I could definitely do Mankini armor. Have you, yes. have you guys? Are you guys familiar with the stream? Because I have done a bikini stream um, and a lingerie stream. Those were some of the the rewards. So if you guys want to see a Mankini armor thing, then definitely Him, do that. not me. Him. <laughs> yeah, and like, I'm fucking doing that. Um, it what do we think about Pax? Print. Just a warning. Yeah, dude, it was so good. I, it was so fucking fun. Dude, even the plus size size I got was like too small. And I was like, dude, I'm going to be hanging out with this fucking thing. <laughs> and then I spent half the stream bending over and picking things up because I thought it was hilarious. I have no shame. Um, so back to the question, what do we think about PAX Day? I haven't watched any of the new stuff about it. Uh, I know the most recent thing that I saw was the release, not the release trailer, the original trailer for it i think it sounds cool like any i play a lot yeah, of like, I think, like survival games i think from what we've seen from it so far it looks really good um especially like it was crazy the amount of detail you can put into like your crafting of your armor and stuff like what was it you could adjust like the different types of metals or like the yeah. texture of the leather like that was crazy <laughs> yeah i'm curious how that will look i think some of the next gen stuff that's going to come out is going to it's going to look really fucking cool Pax Day is looking mid as fuck. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> this is why I want Nuke on. Nuke's got some opinions about some shit. It looks very basic, very boring. 
Um, but this is coming from a player that like I can play Valheim for like three to four hours and have a really good time, but after that, I don't touch the game for six months. Dude, <laughs> I, I I have over I have over a thousand something hours in Conan Exiles, and I think I put the first eight hundred hours in into that game probably the first two months that I played it. Like I just lost my life the first 800 hours in the first first 500 hours you played <laughs> yeah yeah i put the first 800 the in math, the first yeah. 500 dude i played that game so much so i just burnt myself out like so so bad where like, now like just thinking about it, i'm like i don't want to build shit it was um, bad too because like i like called out of work so i could play <laughs> uh, dude, we, lo- um, we played that uh, a lot. his his mom would take the kids um when i would go to work so then i was like all right, I'm going to play hooky. She's going to take the kids. I'm going to call out of work. And then I just get like eight hours to play a video game without kids. <laughs> and I, I have do... a super chill day. <laughs> I do want to yep. jump back into it at some point because they just came out with their um, Age of Warfare uh, season. Like, I'd love to have some type of rotation. Like, maybe we could do um, Diablo season, Conan season, and then Baldur's Gate 3 or something like that just to break things up. Because I, man, even with Diablo right now, like I, I don't think we've locked. We're trying to get our all our Lilith altars, and I'm like, do you want to play early access Baldur's Gate right now? Because I don't want to do this. <laughs> I'm like, I Diablo is a rough time right now. I feel like they've they've had a somewhat of a like we don't know what we want to do with the end game crisis. Yeah, it was. Um, like, you can do hell tides, but those are kind of me- mediocre. Um, you can do nightmare dungeons, but those are kind of mediocre. <laughs> and it's yeah. After a while, it gets a little null. Um, well, also yeah, their servers, their server oh, help dude. has been not good. Like, cause I was having fun playing hardcore, but then the servers start like deteriorating so fast that I'm like, I don't want to be on my hardcore player and then like die because I lagged. <laughs> right. It's it's it seems to be a Blizzard thing because they don't. I, I don't know when the last time they updated their infrastructure for their servers, but it's like their games cannot survive without having some type of weekly reset. And you feel it so much like around like Saturday when everyone's logging on and everything you're like, man, the servers are starting to get pretty bad. Yeah, um, and there's like mobs that are like through the walls. Like, oh, dude, they're low, they not loading them, right? Stuff. Yeah. <laughs> um, I can't tell. There's too much fire everywhere. There's <laughs> too much fire. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> fucking everyone like, bitching I can't, about. I can't see all the flaws. <laughs> everyone bitching about Ash's visuals and, and like fucking Diablo comes out and they're like, blind me. Just show every. I don't want to see anything. Just fucking fill the screen, baby. There's, there's a distinct color. My fire is very orange and theirs is very red and black. S- See, okay. I agree with when some of that. When it's all mixed together, it's hard to see. <laughs> yeah, because when your fire to the goes untrained t- eye, <laughs> when your fire goes down on top of all the poisons, I can't see the poison. So it's like I just they need to adjust the layers where it's the enemy's shit is always on top. Because like it's like I, fucking. I, that's, a good, that's a good solution. Yeah, your AOE goes <laughs> off, and I'm like, dude, I have no skeleton. idea what just happened. <laughs> um, I did. I do think so. Some of the things that kind of I think screwed them not screw them because even the developers like i just fucking everybody does like we were talking everyone just fucking plays games like sucks the fucking life out of them completely and they're like i'm done and like even the developers are like come back when seasons are up like don't (laughs) guys gotta take a break so everyone thought that was like oh my god we gotta write articles about the developer said don't play our game it's like that's not what he said but um, I think one of the problems is that because once you hit level 85, that world tier isn't there to support that. Like they need another world tier for all those players because they're just steamrolling everything. And then I don't know if I'm is the that, only one. If, is that happening with seasons? I, I, I was, I don't sure know if they're getting like, another world tier yet. I, I wouldn't doubt that there's going to be another world tier because they did data mine that there's a new um, gem rarity. So it's like one step over or it's still one step above. So there, there is people are thinking that there's going to be potentially going to be another world tier, but I don't think it's going to come out with a season. They can't even get the gem bags done for the season one. I say that Which as like, the, oh God, I say that as the so asshole. Many, I there's so many I have, gems. <laughs> I have no idea what the coding looks like that. So I have no idea. I don't know how long it's going to take someone to do that, but it seems like just put someone <laughs> on that. It's Dude, just ashes it, has almost inspired me, man. I've like, I'm always been a computer guy. I'm like, dude, shit, maybe I should get into game development. 
and go work for Intrepid. That would be awesome. You're young, too. Do it. I'm fucked. <laughs> you know somebody there now. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, Steven, shit. Remember, you interviewed me, man. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, I should have just asked Steven, too. Like, do you guys need a facility manager? Because uh, it seems to be my qualifications right now. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> how's your HVAC looking? I got you. I'll take care of that. <laughs> we'll get that fixed up right away, sir. Yep. Yeah. No, I definitely <laughs> will show up and work eight hours. I definitely won't only be here for two and then leave. I don't do that. Hey, if you can get eight hours worth of work done in two, why not? That's what I'm saying. I know how to degen. <laughs> I can degen anything. Fucking. <laughs> want to watch me oh, no life work? <laughs> Huh? Fantex, he just said, you know what I believe would be very good to eventually introduce seasons that reset? Ashes. A lot of people would disagree with me, though. And I, I think I would be one of those people. So why <laughs> why I kind of do... Awesome, thank you for the follow. One of the reasons why I kind of do agree... Um, I, so having either just a server that does have some type of reset, I think would be cool for Ashes. Mainly so that people can have that first time server feel because for those of us who are going to be there at launch, we're the only people, unless they do some type of server reset or open new servers, we're one of the only people that are going to feel that. So like it, 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 it would be kind of cool to say like, Hey, this, this is a season where, you know, you guys are going to experience. This is what's like coming into Vera for the first time. Nothing's built up. You're not just going to walk into a metropolis and buy all your things. I know Lex is the wiki guy. I'm sorry if I have been ignoring you. It's not on purpose. <laughs> Lex, you're fucking awesome. I think uh, you were one Lex. of the first people to follow me over on Twitter. So that's fucking sweet. Lex yeah. does great work. No, I know. I Lex. Say, he, he keeps he keeps me in line because I'm like, oh, shit, I don't remember this. And I'm like, oh, man, I got to go look it up on the wiki. I know. Lex, you, <laughs> yeah, you are, doing, so you are doing the sandals work. <laughs> I just I have to let you know the, because the sandals sandals work. Work. it is so it's important. Work, it's sandals it's work. the sandals work. <laughs> it's the work sandal. of the sandal. Like I say, cult of the sandal. But I do think like having some type of season system in Ashes, a specific server though, not like because I sure as fuck don't want like my main server to do that. But like having some something where there could be some type of seasons, I think it'd be kind of cool. Wiki wizard, yeah. PvP <laughs> seasons are pretty interesting. I mean, I think that's the only place where it's really applicable, but yeah, I mean, I haven't game. done yeah too I haven't done too much of like because I didn't even start really getting into PvP till recently. So like I never really participated in WoW's PvP seasons or anything. So I really don't have like a good grasp on what it is. My my only understanding from PV uh, from um seasons is is mainly like Path of Exiles and I know it's like they've got different gameplay modes and things that kind of change the way that things feel so that's kind of cool. I mean, for me PvP is really like the big end game cuz like everything else has a, a definitive very set amount of like um you know what's going to happen. Like PvE, you know what the the boss's mechanics are. PvE or PvP can always be different cuz players react in a different sim, right. different way. And so that kind of keeps the longevity going for me and, and being able to, to have PVP Stevens climb and rent those ranks and have different aspects of like, you know, maybe I can, I, I conquered seven nodes and that's like a massive player achievement. That, I, that th is something to me that is more cool than almost anything else in the game is like, yeah, yeah. imagine having a, having the title inside ashes, you know, Dude, and know. on the yeah. conqueror. That's the thing, I'm like, the person that held the most the most conquered notes. That's the thing. I th I think I think it's scary to see like some of the exclusivity stuff or how hard things are going to be. But I feel like we haven't had a game to really have this in. Maybe now I should put this back into <laughs> put it back into ashes instead of just chatting. But whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it always ends up back in ashes. It doesn't matter what we talk about or what I'm doing. Um. So what was that thought part? Yeah, like I like that would be a massive achievement to be able to get, and like the fact that like you'd have to work really hard for that title. So like I think if people do see this thing, it's gonna be so hard to get this. I'm never gonna get that. And it's like if first off, if you're coming in with it, like I'm never gonna get this anyway. Like you're not. Like you're just not gonna get it. Like, like so if you're already coming into it where this is gonna be too hard, I don't want to do this. Whatever, you're not gonna get it. Like it's just anything in life if that's your attitude, you're not getting it. But if you do come into it, like I want this. This is what I'm focusing every day on how to get there's no fucking way you don't get that thing like if that's if you, you go in anything like if that's your main focus 
And like, as long as you're realistic, like if, if you're a two, you're not getting that 11. That's all I'm saying. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Unless you're really drunk or something. Unless, unless, unless you got big dick and lots of money, but, um, hey, hey, hey. Oh my God. Then you're not a two anymore though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying the... <laughs> the Sailor Jerry's is gone. We're good. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Nukes ready to party. Um <laughs> Lex Lex was saying that Steven's been going hard with all the data dumps. Um <laughs> Lex, does does Steven just tell you like, hey, about to just button about to hijack this stream. You might want to get over here. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, you might want to check this out. I'm about yeah. to drop some stuff. I'm about to make your match. life harder. <laughs> <laughs> Remember how I changed that one thing? There's about 20 more. <laughs> oh no. Oh shit. <laughs> Gotta go back and re edit everything. Yeah. <laughs> um let's see. Sorry. It would be cool. Uh so Mia was saying it'd be cool if players um could build to a server's lasting history. It'd be cool if players could build to a server's lasting history, sort of like log horizon. Isn't that like a thing that we're gonna have where the server is actually going to have like a history? I, I, cause they, they kind of talked about it before where I, I don't know if it's like a shard where you can kind of replay some of the like, really yeah, cool yeah. Moments I think they said something about that. I don't know if it's either That's... replaying those moments or seeing them, but like through, I, I, for me, I thought it was like, yeah, it, it's a recording the library is, I didn't know if it was going to be like, I, I love that. I think that's so cool. Right. Are you seeing like cut scenes? Sure. Like how did, has that been expressed? Like what we're actually seeing? I wonder if it's, if it's kind of a mix of both, like it's integrated. So you, you go to a library inside your node and you're like, oh man, this is the history of my node. And then you get a quick cut scene to kind of like give you the overall factor of what happened in my, in my server. And then you're like, okay. But then when you read into it in more depth, you're like, oh man, everybody on my server made this decision and this is why we're where we're at currently you know it's like that brings so much more like placement into your world you you get so much more immersion you're like why am i here and then you get to this context of like oh these players before me before i got to this world before i got to vera it, they made these decisions and this is why i'm in the place that i'm have to that i'm in and so i'm going to have to make decisions based off of that and i think that is really cool so when do we get to like merge our brains into ashes and just like live there? <laughs> we're all just. I was gonna collect. say. <laughs> we're, we're, we're do, you think, do you think history will be forgotten when a node is sieged and destroyed? Oh my god! Like the burning of like Alexandria, where you just fucking yeah. Tear that's it what down. I was thinking of. <laughs> oh, nah, dude. man, they're gonna be making movies All their about secrets this. Lost. <laughs> they're gonna be making movies about this five years in the future, hundred percent. Dude, I, I'm I'm you know? actually, dude, I want to see. So that's like the big brain thing, right? Like, I I know Steven's talked about how he wants the franchise, like this to just be like this is the flagship of the franchise, but like to branch out into other things. Like, I feel like. It is, I think that's one of the things that makes me really excited too, because I love like I, when like, you know, I've got so many things for war machine and hordes when I played that, um, went with, I've got tons of pathfinder books, tons of D and D books, tons of wow books. I have so much shit where it's like, I, once there's a an established history of this world or all the characters and everything, like, I want to know as much as po possible. So like if we can get, you know, fucking the fifth you know D D and D five E book. Can I get a Pathfinder book? Let me get let me get the novels. When are we getting the T V show and the movie and give me all the T shirts? <laughs> Steven, give me goddamn merch. Let me wear your shit. <laughs> I see it behind Vera, you. Fo Vera fo 5.0. That's, that's the I question see. we should have asked him. Yeah, when are we getting merch? Because I see it behind you all the fucking time and I want to wear a goddamn t-shirt. Make my own ashes t-shirt. I want that undead looking, uh, what is it? It's like the frost one or the undead one. The little like, uh, what is it called? It's like a, it's where it's like a bobblehead almost. Oh, I know what you're talking that about. Yeah, looks... yeah, yeah. Because they did yeah, the mock-ups of those. And what they had the mock-up of their um their 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 troll or their goblin thing, whatever they had. Um next question. I suddenly lost the word. <laughs> uh like Funko Pop almost looking thing, right? Yeah, Funko Pops. That's Let me hold on. <laughs> do Ashes of Creation. I don't know why I'm doing it on this computer because you guys can't see anything. Um Ashes of Creation merch. I you know where I'm going straight to. The wiki. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lex. 
yes the source very of much all knowledge it. um yeah this is the one you're talking about um you guys are gonna fall My off the stream mine? for a second but you'll be uh you'll be you'll be heard just not seen this is the thing the right here this guy for you're sure. in the middle of an ad right now oh my god again ad starting soon not yet yeah. guys quit subscribe or don't it's showing it to me <laughs> it says ad starting soon i have no idea where the ads roll dude i have no idea how how um you're back seconds. on stream Nick, put your pants back <laughs> <up>. um <laughs> <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> oh shit guys we're gonna have to do i feel like round tables are like at least a once a month thing we gotta do now I'm Paris London, you can join our guild, the Chaos and Lace Cartel. Dude. Yeah, that's true. If I you want to join. You how, I was going to say, I, I cannot tell you how bad I feel that I joined the guild before you guys started. Nick, you know you're just going <laughs> to fucking join us. Like, don't even act like you're not going to. We just had Steven on our okay. show. I know, I know, I, I, I know Bustin's had played some games with him too. I, I'm committed. <laughs> I, I've joined the guild. They, they brought me in because they, they enjoyed my talents that I brought. You know, I was tanking a level ten, a level fifteen boss in Alpha One as a level ten. So they're like, "Dude, we got to get this guy in." Nuke, you just didn't know us yet. <laughs> true, true, true. Listen, I'm gonna have. Well, I'm gonna be honest. We're probably gonna be a very small guild. So <laughs> I don't know. Who knows? Well, After this, who knows what this just did? Maybe, maybe I'm so good in the omen guild that i bring you guys as an alliance and see the omen see guild. that's what i'm gonna need because there's gonna be like only like six of us <laughs> six i don't know if omen's okay with that <laughs> they, they want hundred people <laughs> listen i don't know i'm kind of i want to know what the guild bonuses are so depending on what it is it might be a balance between we'll see what happens uh come alpha 2 what we can build i we had i had like I want to say we had like 20 people start to kind of join us towards the end of Alpha 1. So, and then everybody Dude, then everybody disappeared. I, I <laughs> loved playing Tank in Alpha 1, man. Dude, it was, so, it was fun. so fun. Especially the... Uh, <laughs> Dude, the... The first, the first day of Tank, fucking chain pull, axe throw, melee yes. attack was just <laughs> devastating. I felt like you a god. one shot somebody. Dude, I've never enjoyed <laughs> PvP so much in my fucking life as I did in Alpha 1 as a tank. I was like, you just everything so, ate shit. Do you remember that little rock? So like in the castle, they had the castle around and then there was a little rock to the left up a bit. It was like probably 40, 50 meters out. I would hide behind that rock and I would like peek out I lean out and I pull somebody and I just one shot them with my chain pull. Dude, and it was so like fucking fun. Weapon toss. Oh man. Dude. And then they changed it like halfway through and I'm like, damn it, <laughs> yeah. tank sucks. They're like, hey guys, we realized there was a bug with the tank weapon toss. We it's got not it. a bug, it's just great. <laughs> and you're like, aw. <laughs> Lord, did you play damn. Alpha One? I did play Alpha One. That's right. I was what? trying to remember. What were your opinions? Yeah. Did you get to? Were you able to get yourself involved in a siege? I no, I did not do any sieges. I hopped in at the tail end of Alpha One. Oh man! I want to so say I like didn't get to experience that much. Annie, were you able to get into the sieges? I think you yeah, did I one did with siege. me, right? Yeah. Yeah, I did. It was, fun. I it did was like three. crazy and chaotic, but it was fun. <laughs> Dude, that was one of the because. This was like goes back to like everyone complaining about the visuals and stuff, and it's hard to see. I thought that was one of the most fun things I have ever played in an MMO. Was just you literally felt you were like in a battle, Lord of the Rings. Everything's fucking exploding. There's so many things happening. I was like, this is. It felt like I was playing Modern Warfare, but then as an MMO, and like it felt so fun. Where I was like, <laughs> you, dude, you were an individual and part of this just massive spectacle of battle and, and, and incredibleness. It was it was so good. I, I had an extreme amount of fun. I, I was probably involved in probably like five or six sieges during the Alpha One. Yeah, well, I think I got to like three or four of them. Is uh, I I it, it was, was so fun. I've never Dude, had tanks that. were so useful. You could pull people from 30 meters away with your chain pull. And it was just, you were like, oh, dude, this cleric <laughs> thought he was okay. Fuck no, man. I'm pulling your ass in. You're dead. Dude, that's the thing. <laughs> I love chain pull as, as an ability. It's one of my favorite. That was uh, one of the things I was kind of bummed about with Diablo 4 because, like, the chain pull wasn't very good. Now, now it feels a lot better. But I was like, dude, that's like, I've, 
I think too it was like ESO was one of the first games I played that the, there's like just a staple of like one of the tanks was like you had that chain I was like why don't more games have this because this is fucking awesome <laughs> like fuck gap it, it I don't need to charge good. I'm fucking pull them to me it, it feels bad I'd probably say for the uh, the opposing side of like the receiving end of the chain pull yeah but, anytime I mean, you're your getting... end, you're like you're like Dude. disorienting too you're like what the hell <laughs> I'm gonna say anytime like, Dude, that you can like take over I someone else's character man. doesn't feel good you're like I yoinked this man he's dead <laughs> <laughs> I've I've proven my impact on this gameplay, you know. <laughs> All right, I think uh, some of you guys are heading out, and it is getting almost midnight for us. Um, and I think we're close to that three hour mark. And as much as I don't want to end the stream, I think we gotta get ready for bed. <laughs> but uh, this was a ton of fun. Really late. I can't believe that Steven came on our show, um, dude. Fucking amazing! Thank you. Congratulations, you guys are awesome. <laughs> there was, you guys um, it. dude. I was at first. I'm like, this. There's no fucking way. And then, okay, it's slightly <laughs> embarrassing. I wrote Steven. So this is before content creating and all this other stuff. Um, yeah, Skyx, uh, you missed it. Uh, Steven was on our show. Oh, jeez. Uh, yeah, no. Steven was Steven, on. Steven. For... Steven like photobombed our show. Yeah, he, he kind of hijacked, just, the, hijacked our bit. stream. It was amazing. Yeah, Skyx. You have to go to the YouTube. You have to rewatch. It's a done deal. You're, you're um, set in. <laughs> so it's slightly embarrassing because I wrote Steven this whole letter um, before I was a content creator. And I don't know. Uh, it just popped up because it's, it's, he, he messaged me on Discord and he's like, it, it, it isn't, it says it's indeed me. And I was like, okay, first off, delete. I hope you never read that. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, oh, that's fucking embarrassing. Um, like, oh god, that's a letter I sent you like five years it ago. It wasn't that. It's just I was asking Stephen uh, just because I have ADHD, and I was curious because it, he seems to have some uh, some of the, some of his things kind of resonate with me. And I was asking like, do you have ADHD? Or like, are there any books that you read for like you know business wise? I was I was on a big kick about discovering <laughs> ADHD and, and it was people after that you got diagnosed. It was after I got diagnosed. It was a anyway. It was um, a very embarrassing <laughs> message that I sent out. So I was like, all right, delete. Please, I hope you didn't read that. <laughs> it's, it's fucking embarrassing. I sent that t like three fucking years ago. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, so funny. I completely forgot about it. So I'm like, wow, well, I can't believe so that's not only there. Not only did you get like the startling moment where it was actually Steven messaging you, but then you yeah, then I'm seeing like, oh shit, please, like, oh, Steven, God. don't read this. And I'm like, God damn it, what is? I'm like, what is happening with my life right now? Um, but yeah, no, Steven, Steven, uh, Steven came on. Um, definitely check that out. Uh, I'll have everything edited up on YouTube or check out the VOD. Uh, it's probably about 30 minutes in. Um, it was he joined in pretty pretty early into the into the stream, so that was fucking insane i and i wasn't sure i didn't know if it was him at, at first i was like okay someone's gotta be trolling us i was dude, like there's no, I, no way this is steven i was like dude steven you're such a uh uh what is it a pioneer in the mmo space i was like there's no way <laughs> that's what i'm like there's no fucking way you're coming on our show right now <laughs> yeah <laughs> i was like and when he dropped in we only had 15 viewers so i'm like dude like no way there's no way this is steven and then I turn around, like we're in. Steven's in here for a while and fucking shoots up to like I almost mean, eighty. Views. I'm like, what the fuck is happening right now? This is this is kind of almost in comparison and contrast to like Escape from Tarkov, the the level of detail, the level of passion, the level of love that they have into not only this genre, but their own gameplay, is just so amazing. And and I think that's probably the thing that that sold me on ashes of creation the most is steven's own like commitment and and love for the genre he wants to see mmo succeed it's not even necessarily that he wants to see aoc com uh, like succeed he wants everyone to enjoy and love this genre and i think that is probably the most amazing thing and the thing that brought me in the most and and it's a fun first player first mentality that is awesome I think I, I that's that's what I love about it and that's what brought me in. Yeah, I 
I'm glad yeah. you're saying that now, but I was literally sitting there telling Steven this stuff. I'm like, I know I'm gushing right now. I am gushing right now, and I'm telling you how much I love seeing how much effort you guys are putting in. I was like, God damn it. Jamie, shut up. Please find a question. Find a question. Stop showing everyone that you have like this man love for Steven. Like, just please move off of it. Think of something to say. And I'm like, I can't. I'm just going to enjoy it. This is a me moment. If you have a man crush on Steven because he's just – one of the greatest pioneers in, in MMOs. It's okay, man. Feel good about I, it. It's a listen, good thing. I, there's no shame. <laughs> there's no shame in having a man crush on <laughs> This guy <laughs> is trying to bring back the feeling that we've all been wanting for a really long time. <laughs> I know. It's, it's so good. So uh, all right. I keep saying this. We're going to end the stream. Thank you guys so much for coming and hanging out. And we will see you. And yeah, I know. I'm it sucks you want to man. Um, I'll definitely I'll have it up there. Yeah, no, MMO bromance. Dude, I just <sighs> MMO bromance. It's just the, even the idea. I'm okay. I'm just it's gonna just turn into everyone's gonna be like, they just white knight or whatever. This was literally supposed to be our stream. Okay, I gotta let you guys know this. Annie and I finally disagreed on something. And there were systems that we also kind of like were on the fence or felt like we weren't really feeling things. This was supposed to be our stream when we were at yeah, two more minutes. This was supposed to be the stream <laughs> where we had some of our criticisms. And what do I do? I just fucking girl. gush and fangirl <laughs> over Steven coming into my goddamn video <laughs> and lose all my composure. <laughs> Hey, I still brought up my concern with the level 50 cap for the free holds. No, I know. We so. did bring up a few Steven's things. Like, um, Steven's like, I've thought about this for like six months, and I've got you covered. I know. I was like, <laughs> I, know, I, was great. I knew he had it. <laughs> there it is. Oh, my God. Um, okay, guys. It's thank you stuff. so much for coming and hanging out. Uh, Nuke, thank you for joining us on this adventure. Lord, I'm sorry. Oh, I spelled now we need wrong. to go another 45 seconds to hit the three-hour yeah. mark. I've oh, been multitasking sure. this whole time. You've been multitasking. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. It's all right. Lord's Thanks for coming. Out. Work. <laughs> yeah, I told you I had an hour and a half, and this is three hours. Oh yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, Lord. <laughs> it's okay. It's right. I'm hoping you're just enjoying the ride. Um, yeah. I'm not expecting much. <laughs> it was just, I just, it was cool having you guys on. Um, next time we do this, uh, if we're hopefully not so rudely interrupted. No, Steven, seriously, anytime you want to interrupt rudely. our stream. <laughs> Anytime, real, anytime like, you want to hijack the stream, you are you are now family. Make yourself at home anytime. Yep, anytime. Just kick, put your feet up, go eat my snacks, do whatever you want. Just hang out on the stream. <laughs> uh, but what I was trying to say is, obviously, it was supposed to be our stream about us criticizing them, and I feel like now I was be like, yeah, those tangent guys, all they do is white knight. And it's I, like, don't, I mean, well, I don't know if it was just right, like but... criticizing. It was just like thought provoking discussion. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much. We'll see you on the next one. Have a good night.